All right, man. Let me get the chats going. Korean Jesus is in there. All right, up. Let's go. Synth Fighter Podcast, Episode 2. Play around with all the effects all we can, man. This is a learning process. You know what I mean? I was going to do this. I was going to do that background, but, you know. Oh, I'm into that. So what's going on, man? Two weeks? It's been two weeks. Feels like it was yesterday. Right? Yeah, it was crazy. uh, Definitely. A A lot has happened. Man, so much has happened in two weeks. It's it's absolutely out of control. We got a uh, big drop yesterday. We got some Behringer drops. We got Moog drops. We got, we don't got no sequential. We got Not Arteria. Yet. Not yet. And we don't got no Novation, which I'm, I'm hearing there's, hearing rumblings of both of those. So, so what have you been up to, man? Well, I, um, I obviously I had built the cat and the, uh, the, the uh, dueling wasps there on that rack. That was kind of cool. Oh, yeah. I was messing around with that uh, today, and um, yeah, I, I got some great... That thing, I don't know what it is, but having two wasps connected together is just the, the coolest thing. I think that's you nuts, know? man. Two wasps um, and the cat. Yeah, and the cat. And I have them linked through MIDI, so I can turn them off and on if I want to, but I, I what I've been using them as is one giant synthesizer. Yeah. So technically, I've got what? six oscillators yep <laughs> dude um you hook the edge up to that now and you got percussion well that's the thing so that's my next experiment we talked a little bit about that i was gonna i'm gonna definitely do that i'm waiting for the cable stupid cable hasn't come in yet um i also ordered a really interesting thing boss just came out with well maybe i don't know if it's just came out but it's what i saw that it, it you know most recently it's a midi cable that you can adjust okay. so you can you can angle it because i was looking at angle oh, cables yeah because almost you need the uh the one that goes like that right the media yeah like yeah that. yeah yeah the duck neck. and yeah, exactly and i and i'm like i couldn't i the ones that i saw that were angled the pins aren't set up right mm-hmm. so they would be if you plug them into a midi device they would angle down which is great if you're running them off the back of a synthesizer yeah um but the way the Behringer wasp and the cat is, they're on the front mount. There says so a front mount. So um, I checked this out, and I it, it was it, they're a lot of money though, man. I I, I spent like twenty four dollars on this one cable that's only three feet long. Dude, nobody um, knows how much cables cost. <laughs> it's like crazy. They probably make them for like you know four bucks. You yeah, know what I mean? Like socks, man. Do you, do you find like <laughs> suddenly you're like, how do I not have a cable for this? exactly it's crazy so so that's what i was doing with that and then um i uh i basically today i i I sent it to you i posted up my uh my roland seo2 yep and my um my uh korg uh monologue the red one yeah the red baron so i got them uh up on gear exchange if anybody's interested just go to Gear Exchange, look up Echo Craft. You'll come to my uh, dashboard and you can check it out. I'm, I'm, I got one thing was really cool. Sweetwater, as soon as I put it up for sale, because I'm kind of putting it up at a low price for mm-hmm. what it is yeah. for the monologue, monologue, however you say it. Yeah. Um, they did a, a pick of the a Gear Exchange pick of the week. Um, so when they did that, I got forty watches automatically. Oh, man, the SEO too. Listen. That thing is an awesome. Oh, it's fantastic. It sounds the, amazing. The problem is though, is I I stopped using it a long time ago, man. You mini, know? Mini knobs, man. That's the problem. Oh, well, that was the thing that drove me crazy. Ugh. Um, even breaking it out today because you got to take pictures for gear exchange. Yeah. I did plug it in because it does have a speaker in it. And I was playing around with it. It has an awesome uh delay, analog delay in it. Yeah. Um and I was playing around with it, and the the knobs just were driving me crazy, man. Even even when I was messing with it today, I said I can't. I I'm this is gone. Uh, so that's up on the site for three hundred and fifty five dollars. That's decent. Yeah, I don't. I mean, they go with this last time. Roland should have done a deep mind size one. How cool would it have been? Oh, that would have been great. Like desktop size with big knobs, man. I think Absolutely. I think they would have sold a ton of those absolutely i agree 
Um, but I think they they teamed up with who was it? Studio Logic. Studio Logic, yeah. Was it Studio Logic? Or, Studio Logic or Studio Electronics? So, yeah, one of those, one of those guys. Those, yeah. And um, it's awesome. it's a great it's a great piece. I I've used it a couple of times in some of my recordings, and uh, I mean. Then after a while, it just ended up back in the box, and it's in, it was in the closet, and so was it the uh, the monologue. So it's time to I was like, you out. know what? It's time to it's time to. I know you said that you don't get rid of stuff, oh, dude. <laughs> but man, after that MPC incident, I'm I'm totally changing my mind here. I think, man, I, don't I know. Mind. And I was I was a little hot on you yesterday, man. I kept saying, <laughs> get rid of it, you know. <laughs> well, the thing is, is I should get rid of it. And you know, did I tell you this last time we were talking that I thought? I, I I was trying to self sabotage myself. Did I tell you that? No. So like when the mini freak was coming on the way, I went and bought the MPC Red Baron MPC One. Oh no, kid! Which is so crazy to do because this is coming. I gotta learn it. Right. And this devil on my shoulder went and made me buy the MPC, and then I had these two, one which is obviously totally insane to learn. I feel like, and the other one's crazy to learn too, but. You know what I learned when I plugged both in? I learned that one was so intuitive and felt amazing. And the other mm -hmm. one felt like absolute total foreign object. Like, like we don't belong together. You know what I mean? It's like when you go on a date with that chick and you're just like, oh, this ain't working, it's like, man. It's like kissing your sister. Oh, yeah, man. No one wants to be <laughs> at that, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? So no, I was I like. I hear you, dude. I, I, when I, when I found, when you did the, uh, the thing with the, the, the mini freak, I have the software for that. Yeah. Um, and I was like, wow, this is a cool little synthesizer. And I was, I told you, I don't know if I told yeah, I did. I told you it was between that and the Osmos and and the Hydra. Those were the things that I was looking at. And I went with the Osmos. I'm like, you know what? This is completely different. I'm going to go with this. Well, I tell um, you now that you're thinking about going mini freak or you've already made the leap to the mini, we're the freaks now, man. So that's right. We're freaking out. We're freaking out. I think that's <laughs> going to go with the Osmo. So nice, man. You just, and dude, the thing is built like a tank. I was so surprised. What's up, George G's. What's up, Hayes Anderson. Got a few people in the chat. Best Korean cool. Jesus. Yeah. So that's going to fit with the Osmo so well. So I, I noticed there's an empty spot on your desk. Is that right here? Is that where that's going to go? That I got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I kind of think I would like to have it uh kind of on a stand angled up like on one of these stands right yeah I just got to rejigger some things i usually have these pedals can't see them up oh, okay up, right i usually got the uh microcosm and the chroma console pedal there but i just moved them back because when i was doing that demo I, man i gotta get some more stuff right i need one of those overhead things it's just too much stuff to record you got an overhead camera i uh, so i have um so like the boom the boom arm that my mic is on yeah um I so I had this thing going with Tonar, um, T O N O R. Yeah. Um, they make microphones, boom stands. This is a fine, fine microphone. Everybody makes fun of me, but this thing sounds ridiculous. <laughs> and it I've looks, gotten really, I got really good, nice man. microphones, and like I love this microphone. It looks awesome. Um, it is. It's cool, you know. Um, plus, it kind of goes with the whole aesthetic of the room. And is that lit uh, up, or is that just the way it looks? Yeah, it's yeah, it's lit up. It changes oh, different sweet. colors too. I got um, the IC mon here. I got the uh that work, thing's awesome, man. Worker B mic, man. I think it's cool. Those are very cool. Yeah. I was checking those out. But anyway, Tonar, um, I bought uh, uh my first one that I bought from them. Uh it broke. The screw broke down at the bottom. Um, not the tightening screw to the table, but the the actually boom arm screw. Mm -hmm. So I said, Oh man, I don't want to send this back. It was cheap. You know what I mean? I'm like, so I wrote to them and I said, Hey, I said, you know. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix this, but you know, they're like, no, send it back. I said, no, no, I'm going to fix it. So they were like, okay. And they sent me this one. Now this is the extra long one. I mean, this thing is like, Ooh, okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So they sent me this one and they told me to keep the other one and I fixed it. And that's the one I use for my overhead. Um, I just take my phone my uh my iphone and i just may put it on the overhead i think you do the same thing right yeah i just do the iphone on that little gooseneck thing you see over here you see it in the background yeah. there yeah so that's all i use it it's annoying that i gotta i should just buy another one like 25 bucks but I yeah i mean so toner just this is kind of interesting and i wasn't going to say anything but toner reached out to me this morning and they want me to demo one of their mics 
Sweet. Um, so they asked me for my address and stuff, and I was like, oh, okay. And uh, nice. so, I, so I, I messaged them back, and uh, they said, yeah, just give us your address and stuff. You can keep it. And, and it's it's one of the higher-end ones that they have. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. So um, definitely get I, – I support Toner, man. I think they're cool. I'm going to check Toner out. I haven't checked Toner out at all. I'm going to yeah, check Toner out. They're decent, and they're and they're they're based they're based in China, obviously, but they have a, a home base here in California, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty cool. And that's why this girl Ann reached out to me about the uh, microphone, mm -hmm. um, because she said that they've been watching my videos and they like what I've been doing. Nice, because I did a whole thing on the toner arm and the microphones and all that stuff, and they were like, "Yeah, okay." So that was so kind of cool so today. What do they got what do they got? They got they got mics, mic stands, boom arms. Yeah, if you uh, you can if you want to pull it up on the let me just see on the pull it up here. Hold on. Yeah. If you go on to amazon.com, uh they have a whole page. Uh, they have microphones, right. boom arms, um I think they do some cables, some cords and stuff. Let's they have a really this. cool boom arm that actually lights up and I'm I'm all about lights. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I <laughs> I like lights too, dude. I that's that's all about the spaceship, man. To get her going here. I'm just doing some live TV adjustments on the fly here. Getting you centered in the... Uh... Do you got another window open too so you can see everything? No. All right, cool. All right, I got you in there now. So, yeah. T what's it called? Toner? How do you spell it? T-O-N-O-R. T-O-N-O-R. Toner. Toner Professional. All right, let's check it out. I'm just pulling the website up here between us. People can check it out. Toner TC310 gaming mic. So that's yep. the mic you got there. It's the toner one. No, this is actually this is a Fi Fine. So F I F I N E. Oh, uh, but see that, see that boom arm? That boom arm's sick, man. These are cool, man. That one lights up. It's RGB. That is that, sweet. That was when they first came out with that. That was like $98. I think it's like 50 bucks now or something like that. Oh yeah, man, that's cool. And these are all USB mics or XLR too? XLR and USB, yeah. This Sweet. one's just USB. Well, I'll tell you what, man. Depending on what you what you end up uh, doing, I might pick up one of these beauties. Yeah, I mean, they sound great. Um, I also have a I use for my vocoder. I have a fine fine mic. Yeah. Um, it's just a regular handheld mic, but I put it on a shock mount and stuff, and that's what I use for my vocoder. Yeah. That one's XLR. That one's not USB. That's cool, man. That's very, but, very cool. But and yeah, they news. make. What's that? And it's good news, man. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, send me free stuff. I'm, I'm loving it. So. I love your demos, man. I love all this. <laughs> I love all your demos. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. So listen, man, big news. Let's big news. So let's, what do you want to hit first? You want to hit the, the Astro Lab first to get that out of the way? Yeah, I think we should do that. Yeah, because I think people are wondering what we're thinking about it. And to be honest, I got I got some opinions, and I know you do too. We chat a little bit off off camera about this. And uh, what do you think, man? What do you think? Let's so what do you think? Let's do like a whole spread. You know, what do you think of the presentation, the the press conference they did? What do you think about how they did that? What do you think about the reveal? Were you expecting what they brought out, and then the overall product in general? What were you, just give me your thoughts on all that? So the press conference was interesting. Um, let's start with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was kind of cool show, uh, you know, having those two guys up there on stage. Um, obviously the founders of, of Artoria. Yeah. Um, I thought it was real interesting. I never heard of storm. Um, well, I shouldn't say that I've heard of it, but I never saw it actually. Me neither. I, I was kind of um, like, Whoa, okay. Yeah. And both of you and I said that it kind of reminds me of reason. Yep. You know, um, so I don't know who was first. I believe Reason might have been first. I don't know. But maybe it was a European thing where people just had Storm and not Reason. But was it Propeller Heads German? I think they were a German company. I think so. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so that was kind of cool. It was interesting, you know, knowing a little bit of getting to know a little bit about the history of, of uh, Artoria. Um, obviously, we both love Artoria stuff. I have a bunch of their their products. Um, when they revealed, and I'll go back to the press conference in a second because yeah, yeah. the demo thing, that's a whole other ball game. Um, yeah. I agree. Um, but the, the, um, 
the presentation when they when I saw it, you actually it was you who showed me the one that Nick Bat did on Sonic State. So that's yeah. when I first saw it. Yeah. And I went, ooh. And that I was, was like, nice. And that was just what was that? That was just like a piano patch. That was nice. Well, that's see, that's what I love about Nick Bat. Nick Bat isn't afraid to bring out the synthesizer end and the effects end yeah. of a piece of gear. Mm -hmm. Um, because he's a synth guy, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, so, and I was the aesthetic of it. I was like, wow, this is really, this is really pretty. Like this is, this is a nice looking keyboard. Mm -hmm. Um, so past that and that little window that now, so that little window I thought was really kind of cool. Um, the, the some, nest knob, the little, yeah, knob, yeah. The nest, that's perfect. Actually <laughs> high, high fidelity too, man. Like it does look like it the looks nest. Good. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I watched Sonic State today and he said, Nick Bat said that he thought that it was from a Google thermostat that they actually <laughs> sourced the stuff. I don't know if that's true or not. That's what he said. But I, was I like, haven't. Oh. Yeah. I haven't watched that episode yet. Um, but I, I'm going to tonight. I'm actually going to watch it tonight. But I, so I, I looked at that and I said, all right, this is kind of cool. Um, this is different. Uh, the fact that it has multiple functions and it also is a little like window to the, to basically um, uh, the menus, right? Um, you know, menu diving is an, is one thing. Um, you know, we both own, uh, you know, the Korg uh, wave state and stuff. There's a lot of menu diving involved in those synthesizers. Um, Big time. But, but not as bad as the originals. I mean, very true. At least, at least we have this stuff on the front panel that we can tweak. Yeah, yeah. You put the time um, in, you can figure it out. Exactly. Um, so I'm going to jump now back to the press conference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But hold on a second now. So overall, you thought this thing was, like your initial visceral reaction was, that is nice looking. Yes. Looks wise. They knocked yes. it out of the park, my opinion. Yeah, and this dude, this dude that I work with, Melvin, because we were looking at it um, uh, on on our lunch break, and at work, and Melvin and I, Melvin writes, uh, he's a producer and he does beats and stuff, and he's very talented, does a lot of rap and stuff, and so he's he's looking at, you know, I should tell him about your MPC, dude, because he's looking for something. So, yeah, tell me, but old Ron Kavanaugh said he might give me a give me a lesson on that too. I gotta listen. I gotta give it. A, I gotta give it. <laughs> To be honest, dude, it's embarrassing how little of a shot I gave it because it really I turned think it me is. off that bad. I was just like, I just, like I was telling you before, I got a bit of ADHD. I like having multiple things well, going at once. And you and when, me both. Yeah, just to get that thing and be like, I got to spend a year, like, you know, nuts deep in this. I can't do it. Well, well I mean. I will try. I'm going to try. I'm going to give it a little bit of a go. I th I thought you gave it the old college try. I mean, oh, I, I was. Dude, I don't even know if I gave it that much, man. It's bad. Really? Uh, well, I gave it three tries, and on all three tries, I got so pissed off. I was just like, "This cannot be how this thing works." Yep. And some guy wrote a comment when I said so. I think I did a synth car episode about it, and the guy was like, "Man." What do you think it was just going to be? You were just going to be able to open it and, and play something out of it? And I was like, yeah, I kind of did think that a little bit. You know, I did kind of well, think that. But then he was like, it's a whole production studio, man. So you got to like, and I was like, okay, fair enough. I'm humbled a bit now and work. See, I, I, I know nothing about those. Um, and yeah. I do know that they are production studios. That's like, uh, was it the Machina and the Tractor and all that stuff? Yeah. And uh, some people love the Deluge. Uh, can't wrap my head around that, bro. Um, um, <laughs> the deluge, the deluge pre-screen was insane. Just, like any of that stuff, though, yeah, I just yeah. look at it and I go, eh, you know what I mean? Like, so why doesn't it jive with you? What, like, what's your style? I kind of, it's probably similar to mine, but like, well, I'm I'm old school. I'm yeah. like, uh, you know, I grew up on tape machines and and big analog consoles and you know, uh, two track, four track, eight track. 24 track machines you know yeah, and yeah and that's where you know those are the studios that i worked in and stuff and like i when i was able to finally record because i had i had four tracks mm -hmm. i had an eight track reel to reel i had my own studios with tape yeah um so my thing is like hey i press a button i arm a track um i walk over here i pick up a guitar i play i go over here i play a keyboard i lay a drum track that, that's my mentality and i get it like in the box thing with the mpc stuff mm -hmm. 
You can do all that. Mm -hmm. But I just, the whole menu diving thing, like, you know, if when I have, because I have a 49 inch monitor in front of me right now, that's mm -hmm. what I have in my studio. I got two 24s above that. Yeah. The two 24s are for my mixing board and all my plugins up top. Down at the bottom is my, my track view. And oh, that's, cool. that's, that's my tape machine. Yeah. I am the track. I record. I'm good. I'm not menu diving. I'm not. <laughs> Bro, that's kind of how I feel too. I like to hit record. Yeah. And go, I guess it's just a style we do. Like I'm kind of like a, a some, I'm a long formy kind of jam and whatever yeah. it is, it is. And maybe go do some posts messing around or just throw it in the trash if you ain't into it. And if you're into it, you're like, sweet. Right. So the fact you have to like arm a track, set the bars, then arm another track, then set the bar, then set the sequence and set the bar and a track and a bar. Dude, I was like, I was like, I can't do this, man. I just really can't do it. I don't think, but I'll give what you a shot. Go ahead. No, I just, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'm going to give it one more shot. All right. Well, you know, and one I guess more. I was, I was coming down on you though. I was just like, you, what did you say? You said, uh, it give me a one <laughs> if I should sell it and a two, <laughs> if I should keep it. And I'm like, I'm like, yes, one all the way. I'm like, you dropped the one fast, dude. <laughs> you know? So, so, okay. Let's get back to the, uh, um, get back to the let's Astrolab. Get back to the Astrolab because MPC always creeps in. But so the Astrolab, you want to talk about the press conference a see, little bit? See, 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 right there tells you something if it's always creeping in. You see, yeah. you can't even open the box anymore. Dude, I but anyway, yeah. Uh... <laughs> I think it's the red color. It's got, it's got some weird vibe to it. I don't know. I should have got the Nintendo color one, to be honest. But well, that, that would have like been cool. Two, that was like 200 bucks more. For really? Color. No, thanks. I'm going to buy one of those overlays and put on it. There's some cool. That's overlays. interesting. I, it's weird how the companies do that with color, though. Like, you know, like I found out that the red monologue. Uh, is sought after because they stopped making them. Well, when you um, put that picture up today, I was like, ooh, that red's got a little bit of shine to it. Yeah, it's it's like a metallic nice. red. It's actually really cool. I just don't use it, man. You yeah. know what I mean? I I so anyway. Yeah. We digress. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So back to the Astro Lab, baby. The the biggest thing scam oh not what the no. biggest thing going of all time <laughs> so yeah tell me what you think so you press conference you thought it was what the boys didn't do it justice for the synth engine eh no um granted the dude that they had playing obviously you could tell he was definitely Maddie. well versed yeah matt's well versed in in uh music production he's a great piano player he's a great keyboard player you could tell yeah, yeah he's good. you know you could also tell he had years of 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 uh training yeah. Um, when I see somebody play a piano like that, you know that they, you know, they had some oh. Russian lady with a ruler in front of them saying, oh, "Don't yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but like I looked at it and I was like, okay, this is cool. But like, it's like, okay, dude, you're playing like some, some old school, like riffs. Um, he played, um, uh, the 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 Toto song there. Yeah, some organ and, patches. Yeah, and I'm kind of like sitting there going, okay, so who are we generating this towards? Who are we who are we pushing this towards? Are we pushing this towards the gigging, uh, you know, musician that's playing in a cover bar band, you know, that's going to play this kind of stuff, or are we pushing it like you mentioned the bedroom musician because they mentioned it, you know? Yeah. Are they put are they pushing it towards that, you know? And then I found out the sides aren't even real wood. That kind of pissed me off. Ooh, yeah, you wanted that real wood, eh? Well, I like, I, yeah, you know, yeah. if you're going you're gonna to put wooden sides on I something, know. do it, you know? This even, is the future, baby. Come on now. Well, even my Deep Mind 12 has real wood on it. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? That's true. That's true. Um, but I, you know, I, I, I think it, the sound's phenomenal. Let's put it that way. It is amazing sounding, but that's because it's the V collection. Mm -hmm. um, it's the, it's the, um, the what do you call it? The uh the lab there. Um the V V lab or analog the, lab. Analog lab. And I I actually just updated my analog lab software. Um I don't know if you've you you've downloaded that. I haven't messed around with any of that stuff yet. You know, you know I'm kind of like VSTs are like sunlight to a vampire to me. You know, that's kind of well, no. I just <laughs> I'm just like, but <laughs> but this is kind of one of the cool things is when I did that behringer demo of that free vst that crashed all the servers i was like okay that's all right it's free whatever yeah and me and you were talking we're like it's an analog vst so it's not going to yep. blow you away a lot of people were expecting pigments i think but anyway then i think i think well, you're right about that 
Yeah, I think people were expecting it to be like unbelievable. Over, unbelievable, but again, they're telling you what they're giving you. It's kind of okay, just what you just said there then. Arturia told us who this was made for. They were like, this is made for the stage player, the stage perform. Like they told you right off the bat. They didn't say anything about the knob twisters, the, you know, the, the, the right. sound designers, which is fair enough. But I just wish, what was that girl's name? Jillian? Was that who was sitting the next Lily? to Maddie? Was it Lily? Lily, Lily or Jillian, whoever so, it was. Yes. She did a little something after with some pigments and stuff. And Which was, was like, cool. Oh, but I wish it was longer. It was only like two minutes of the whole presentation. Yeah, it's like, and I didn't get like her sitting next to him. Like I'm sitting there going, why is he, What? They, why don't they introduce her after his kick? You know what I mean? Like, I know. I, they, I, she, I think it because it was just like, it was a giant green screen room. And they were well, just kind of hanging out on the sofa and it just looked kind of. It off. was awkward yeah. though. Cause I'm looking at her going, well, why is she sitting next to him? Like, is she going to do something? Then obviously she pulled out the phone and started just throwing patches down with the Bluetooth stuff. That was cool. I think they um, should have had dueling, dueling Astro Labs next to each other. And he should have he should have done a little bit of organ, a little bit of EP piano, or jam. Jam. And then she goes a little bit of pigments, a little bit of the more the, the analog lab synth. And then come stuff, together stuff. and they both jam. And that would have been breath. That would have been fantastic. And it would have covered both areas because I yep. feel like a lot. I don't know if you've been looking around today, but I was looking all over the web trying to get everyone's reaction to this and what they were thinking. And man, there was a ton of poo-pooing. I don't want to say it was hate. Just people were not impressed, it seemed. And I think it's because of the misconception of what it is. And a lot of us who are synth heads were we were expecting a uh, we were expecting a new poly brute, a new right. freak. We were expecting something monumentous and i do think this well, is pretty huge for what it is to be honest because i think it's i think it's a platform that if you look at big picture this is gonna what they got put in this thing and how they can build on this in the future i think it's a pretty big deal and we won't yeah. notice until five years or something yeah and i i, I agree i and but you know, i mean like i i did a little surfing today kind of looking around too and i noticed a lot of the um the people that they geared that to were uh studio musicians mm -hmm. um and gigging musicians i don't know if you caught that um there was a guy on um from guitar center yeah. um he's he's a wicked studio musician in la and you know he was digging it because he his whole mindset is what they said in uh in the demo was you don't need it. You don't need to take a, a computer with you anymore. You pack this thing up, you go on the road, you, you put, you, I believe you can punch up, you know, the, uh, say a set list or whatever, what you yeah. want to play and boom, you're done, you know, and it's um, fast. Uh, just bring a phone. Like she was able to, you know, change the patches on the fly with the phone. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, that's impressive. Um, but on the other hand, um, I just didn't, I, I looked at it and said, you know, here we are, uh, Samurai, that we have these big, you know, we have a Matrix Brute next to me over here. We have a Poly Brute, which I would love to own one of those. They're just too damn expensive know, right now. Me too, man. Um, and, you know, you have these synthesizers that, to me, those are iconic. Yeah. You know, I think, I'm, I'm hoping this isn't like, um, like one of the ops or one of the Moogs that, they came out with this and it was all flash and hype and man, not for nothing, but for the, was it how many years was it? 20, 25 years, 25 years, 25th year anniversary. And they come out with, I think uh, they should have done a 25 year anniversary part one, two, three, or they should have done like a 25 year anniversary with a couple items. I I think they should have done a couple new products. To be yeah, honest, and it, I mean, last, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to was say. it last year that they came out with the um the Matrix Brute Noir? Matrix Brute um, Noir. Wow. Beautiful. It was beautiful. It's all black. Mine's kind of kind of gray. Um, I, I love it though. It's still amazing. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, they they could have they could, like you said, done a whole bunch of stuff, like to come out with the noir now. Come yeah. and then and then said, hey. This is another flagship synth that we're getting out mm. there, and it's called the Astrolab. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm not, I'm not hating on it. I like Autoria stuff. I just think that, you know, one of the things that I have to say, you know, I, I, I sent you the Woody uh, Piano Shack mm -hmm. video. <laughs> was, he's funny, dude. You got to yeah, admit, he's you see, pissed. You see, you see the day before, Woody was like, he was like, yeah. 
blowing a gasket of how awesome it was. And it, I don't know if he got a ton of ton of heat, but the next day he came out with that like sobering, was, sobering. I don't know what it was. It's funny. I like him. He, he's cool. He was so pissed off though. He's like, oh, and they didn't pissed. send me one. Yeah, he was pissed. I think. <laughs> do you think that was like kind of like, uh, hey Arturia, do you really want me to keep? knocking this thing just send it over let me try it at least so i can give my people because he's got like eighty thousand. well subs, see you know? if you if you listen to him so when he showed that that piece about when he took the um the key key step the big one yeah uh and he broke the key yeah and he said he's going to do a video on flimsy keyboard key beds yeah um and i think that's great excuse me but um what was funny was I think, and I, I've seen Woody kind of rag on Artoria before too. Yeah. So, and he also said something about the French one time and I'm kind of like going, you don't want to cross the French, man. No, man. I'm like, <laughs> you crazy. And I'm like, I'm sitting there going, Oh man, like I get it. You're British. You're living in Sweden. Cool. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. you know, <laughs> take it easy. But I think that was Woody's play. Woody was like, I'm going to make a little play here to be like, Hey, yeah. Hey, what about one. me? But yeah. guess what? I hope that somebody, I wish maybe, maybe Sonic State will do a more deeper dive. Cause I mean, it's pretty cool that you can pull up a profit. You can pull up a Moog 500. Yeah. You can pull up all these iconic synthesizers and you got the basic uh, cut off resonance envelope LFO to tweak with five right. effects to tweak. Listen, man, if you're playing live, if that's not enough to add some movement to your three minutes of a song that you're playing, I mean, right. you're just not going to have time. So let me ask you another question. If you if you leave your body and enter the body of Maddie, you know the demo guy. Yeah. Would you be impressed with this release? All right. So you're not Echo no more. You're Maddie. Like you're a stage <laughs> performer who's always lugging his laptop around and his big MIDI keyboard. I wish would, I could play like Maddie. Would you be um, like, thank you? I yeah. Well, that's what I mean. I think I would. I think I I think that you know it's funny. I I used to do an open mic night with a cover band. Um, a few years ago and there was a keyboard player um amazing amazing keyboard player and i remember he bought a big yamaha uh motif mm -hmm. um and he was in love with that thing because again that is an all-in-one workstation but if you're going to use it on stage man he had all all the songs on playlist built right into it and he would just call them up when they're ready to play you know um i think somebody like that or like matt I think this would be ideal for. Um, it's it's a beautiful piece of gear. Mm -hmm. It is Artoria, so I'm sure it's built like a tank. I mean, my Matrix Brute is built like a tank. Yep. My little key step thing weighs a ton, and it's built like a tank. Dude, you know what you, I mean? Wait till you get that Mini Freak, man. That's built like a tank as well. It's crazy. It's great. Yeah, you it's know? great. Um, when I, the first piece of Artoria gear that I ever got was um, a Beat Step Pro, yeah, and I have, Pro. My, I, I have it in my... I have it in my... Yeah, I, I I saw that. Um, they're cool. They're awesome. It's got weight to it. You yeah, know what I mean? It's heavy because you it's expect heavy. it to be plastic. Yeah, and but it's like, got a, oh. like this this metal bottom or something. Yeah, you know, very cool. Um, so I mean, I think that I think Atoria, you know, is definitely they're gonna sell them. There's no question. Um, just like when people, you know, laughed at the Osmos. Yeah, that's you true. know, you know, people are buying them because they're very they are exactly what I love. It is expressive. What they said it is too. Yeah, expressive e. I, I, let me. So I we talked about this before. I tried a Roly, hated it. Mm -hmm. I hated the Roly synthesizer. I just, I hated the feel of it. I hate. I'm a keyboard guy. I want to play keys. Mm -hmm. When I when this thing first showed up. Now remember, we don't have places samurai that we can go and 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 try shit out, right? Exactly. So. I run a blind, baby. We're buying blind. Yeah, we bought it blind, man. Yeah. You know, and and uh, it came, and I I hooked it up, and I did exactly what they said. I downloaded the firmware first, got all the sounds on board, plugged in my headphones, and sat there and went, "Holy moly, this is amazing!" Mm -hmm. Um, and so I mean, I think people will get that same feeling when they take the Astrolab out of the box, plug it in. And because the thing sounds incredible, it's there's no question that it doesn't sound good. Those pianos sounded really friggin' good. Oh, dude, and the organs. Listen, the thing about it is, too, Arturia doesn't seem to make mistakes. 
No. Their, their key steps were not, their MIDI controllers, they knocked them out of the park. Their Freak series knocked them out of the park. Their Brute series from beginning up to the Poly Brute yeah. knocked it out of the park. The only thing for me that kind of isn't amazing is their drum machines, but that's only because I don't really prefer that type of industrially kind of European so, sound, you know? Dude, I got a, I got a micro, I got a... Um, micro uh, Brute? Or no? What's it called? No, I've got the Drum Brute Impact. What do you think? I love it. Do you? Okay, man, maybe I'll try it. <laughs> Listen, if it's got the echo stamp of approval, I might give that a shot. So what it reminds me of is back in the day, there were uh, back in the 80s, there were a ton of companies that that came out with drum machines. Mm -hmm. You had Yamaha, you had Roland, uh, you had Boss, you had Alesis, you had all these companies that came out with these drum machines and they all were different. They were all unique. Um, what I like about, now see, I didn't like the original drum brute. I didn't original. like the sound. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't like the drum, this. You got the drum root impact. Right? Yeah, the little oh, the yeah. little guy. Yeah, it was like two ninety nine. Yeah, Dude, um, that's cheap. Yeah, so I I bought it again blind. Yeah. Right. Plugged it in, started tweaking with it and stuff, and I'm like, oh man, this sounds like one of the old Yamahas that I had. Interesting. And like, I was like, oh, this is cool. And what I do like about it that's interesting, and this is what I do. So it has an FM synthesizer built into it. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I, and it's got separate outputs on the back too. So you could take a snare drum out, put it into an effects unit if you want, or something like that. This one has an FM output. So I take the output of the FM synth, which you can shape and tweak and tune, right? Yeah. I put that into uh, an, a boss slicer pedal, which is, you'd like the slicer pedal. It's very interesting. Um, and then, excuse me, I take that. And I put that into the V3, the Roland V3 vocoder. Ooh. That output goes out separately into a little mixer that goes on its own track. So I can go in and tweak it and stuff like that. Oh, interesting. And I've gotten some really cool sounds out of that thing. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not, again, it's not a drum machine for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, it's definitely analog. It's yep. pure analog. Um, I think you'd dig it. If you had a chance to play one or try it out, you know, um, I, I think you would like it. Um, How much you pick one of those up on the used market? You think? Ah, uh, geez, man, I don't know. I, 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 I bought it when it first came out. It was brand new at two ninety nine. Um, that's what I. That's the kind of thing I could. I'm sitting there going, a drum machine for two ninety nine? Seriously? Um, and it's analog. Come on, you know. That's sweet. Um, yeah, I don't know how much it would go for, really. Um. Maybe two hundred bucks. I'd say used. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try one. I'll try one. I'll tell you what. I had to trade out that MPC. I could get one of those drum brutes impacts, and I could get something else pretty cool too for the cost of that thing. To be honest. How, with you. how much was that? Do you mind me asking? I think I got it for five hundred bucks. Is what I paid for. It. Okay. Five ten or something like that with shipping or something like that, which is not the greatest deal. But like I told no. you, man, I had the sabotage monkey on my back trying to screw up my whole vibe. Isn't that the craziest thing? Oh, I told you, yeah. I go through it. It's like I've, I've bought stuff and went, why did I buy this thing? You know what I mean? Um, anything with a major learning curve for me is, uh, it's, it, I, I you just can't. get into it. You just want to get into it, right? Yeah. There's, there's certain aptitudes people have. Like some people have the aptitude to get the wave state and dive into that thing so far they almost lose themselves in it i yep. i'm not into that i like the wave state and sometimes i like buying a pack of presets off somebody loading yeah. them in and then just like tweaking around as i go because i like i like playing more right. than i like sound designing i guess right but I like yeah i'm design too i bought um i bought a couple of uh sound packs for the wave state um i got some really nice like ethereal sounds and stuff uh that i bought um, I bought some, I bought a sound pack from this guy who, um, just makes stuff for the, uh, the, um, sequential, uh, rev two. Sweet. Um, and ever since I upgraded it to the 16 voice, this guy came out with a sound pack, dude, that just like, I'm, I'm, you know what? I should do another demo of that. And I will show you. It's incredible. If you listen to it with headphones on the, the richness of what this guy did by, splitting the oscillators and stuff Ooh, panning them both oh, oh god cool. it and it just sounds so good i wrote to him i said this is the best pack i've bought for a synth in a long time 
that's um, man, isn't that see that's so amazing how some people can just like dial in because you get some people make a patch pack that's just they'll just it's dog shit tweak. yeah but man some people <laughs> dude they're they're artists they're sound artists right yeah it's, they're yeah they're sound creators absolutely amazing. Um, the deep mind 12, I told you before I bought, uh, of a geo synths, mm -hmm. he's got an awesome set of sound packs that he sells. And I bought a couple of them, uh, uh, for the deep mind 12 and I love them. They're very, um, I, I, I use the deep mind 12. I think I told you this basically for pads. Yeah. Uh, so there's some very rich pads that he created and I love it because with me, I don't just stay on that pad unless it, I don't want to change it. That yeah. patch. Yep. But I like going in and tweaking the patches that other people create. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. Just like, yeah, exactly. Sometimes, sometimes you just sit there and you'd be like, oh, geez, all I did was tweak, tweak a patch for a couple of yeah. hours. I love that. It's kind yeah. of meditative and amazing. It's yeah. that's the beauty, like we talked about last time, of this synthesizer lifestyle, man. It's like it's so meditative and relaxing and enjoyable. And you just feel good after coming in and getting around your gear and blasting off. So yeah. Let's, let's blast off to another topic because All right. over, overall, what would you give Arturia this release at a 10? Overall, release Fuck. plus product. What Put me think? on the spot, bro. I'm going, I'm going <laughs> seven. I'm going seven. Oh, no way. I was, I was going to say seven. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm going seven because this is my prediction. I think what they're getting ready to gear up to do because Arturia is not stupid. No. I think they put out the Astro Lab for the stage performer. And you see that big patch they left open on the side over there? Yeah. All right. So that big patch of real estate, they're going to release a full digital synthesizer for all us knob twisters later on. And it's going to have the works in there. And it's going to have the knobs that you can. That's what I think is coming. Because why wouldn't they? Or, or. Like Nick Bat said, he said this would be a great place for like a, an iPad mini. IPad Maybe mini. they're going to put a bigger screen in or something. Who knows? They could, well, if they put a bigger screen in, then that would allow you to twiddly tweak, you know? Right. Yeah. Manipulate so, stuff more. But I think that's coming. I think this platform, what they got going on now, and I don't know what's under the hood. What is it? Raspberry, Raspberry, Raspberry Pi 5 or something like that? Do you know what it is? Under, under the, the hood of that? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's it's a lot more sophisticated than that, I'm sure. Because I, I, I read the other day that the Raspberry Pi 5 actually has it's, the ability to load VSTs onto it now. So Yeah, the, the Raspberry Pi 5 is crazy. I have a 3, um, and I mess around with it a little bit. But it's it, Raspberry Pi, I, we had this discussion before about the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Mod Wave and the Wave State and the Op 6. Yep. Those are Raspberry Pis, man. Yeah, they're all Raspberry Pis, and they're the old one. Sad to say, you know, one thing I just wanted to say real quick. Yeah. Um, and I, and one thing that, that Woody said that made a lot of sense, he said, you know, Toria, they made this presentation sound like they were the first on the block to come up with, you know, this, you know, synthesizer integrated with software stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and he listed a whole bunch of stuff like, like, dude, you have an Autoria mini freak. Mm -hmm. You got to put the mini freak software on your computer. Yeah. You were saying that I'm going to do that. Because they talk to one another and they're integrated. So things that you can do, you won't have to go deep dive menu diving, that kind of thing. Okay, that's sweet. Um, same with the um, the Op6. I use the Op6 software to create patches and then I download them into the synth. I got to um, get another screen. You see where that screen is? I got to get another screen on the go so I can have something else pulled up over here. Yeah. We need to turn this baby into more of a spaceship, man. We got one window. We, got, we need another window in here. That's all right. You know, the, the, the shuttle, the shuttle's growing, dude. Little by little, <laughs> little by little. But uh, yeah, so I, I think that, you know, that's one thing that Woody pointed out that made a lot of sense. They not, they weren't the first ones to do this integration with software on a keyboard. So, um, and I get it, you know, they, you know, I mean, if I'm a company and I'm coming out with something new, I'm going to be like, yeah, well, we're, you know, we're number one to do something Are this big. First standalone though? Uh, Not really, because it's kind of a digital, you know, like, like yeah, it's what, like what, a what digital synth. It? What do you call it? Because the Hydra synth is digital, right? There's no, you know, there's no analog to that at all, right? Other than the no. knobs, full digital, baby. No, but I mean, I mean, the uh, the uh, yeah. the Astro Lab, the Astro Lab, yeah, I don't think I'm assuming the whole thing is digital, right? Obviously. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know, that's you know, that's just 
my take on it. And it's funny that you and I gave it the same rating. Seven out of 10, <laughs> baby. But we'll give, we'll give Maddie's playing a 10 out of 10 for sure. Yeah. All right. And, so and They should have given Lily a bigger shot, but they should have given Lily a bigger shot, man. I'm actually hoping that they give her some, some space to do a bigger shot later. You Absolutely. Know? Because, because well, I was actually impressed with what she was doing. I was like, Oh wow. Yeah. It was Sounds cool. Good man. And and then she stopped and I was like, are you serious? Yeah. He, what I was waiting for. And he had a lot more playtime than she did. He did. He did have a lot more playtime. I don't, I don't know if that's a, if that's a European thing or like, you know, could be, man. You never know maybe, what's going on over maybe in it's Europe, a, brother. A, a male chauvinist thing. Like, it Hey, could you, know. Be, you know, it could be <laughs> over in America. That don't fly, man. The girl. No, 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 stage. no, no. All right. So let's go, man. Let's go to Behringer. Can you see what I got pulled up here? Or are you, are you running blind? I'm running blind. All right. So what I got pulled up here on the screen is uh synth anatomy's website. And we got the Behringer MS five, the five ninety nine rolling sh5 clone ready for pre-order obviously at sweetwater but it's still not up there but i guess it's ready for pre-water pre-order over in europe now dude i know both you and i were insanely excited about this one right yes and I, what go on no go ahead i was gonna say what got you excited about it so i'm gonna start well, well, well i could do this too i'll just i just want to grab a picture of it real quick yeah man Pull it up because, like, the beauty. What, what got me while you're pulling that up? I'll just say what got me excited. What got me yeah. excited was there's something elegant about the interface. I I love the uh, Behringer flip top mono poly poly D design. I love that platform that they're working with. But this one specifically, that grayish green with the orange, the font. Yep. The everything about it to me was just as breathtaking as the Astrolab visually. I was like, oh. And then I also think it sounds insane. And it's super cool that it's a clone of a synthesizer that, you know, man, it's almost impossible to get. And anybody who has one, it barely works. And it's a nightmare. So I think it's an, I actually think this is a massive compliment to Roland that they went and did this. Absolutely. And I'll be honest with you, I've never seen this synthesizer before. So I've I never... I've never seen, a, back then it was called a, what, an HS5, right? Or something like that? I think they had a few models. I think they had the, the SH5, the SH7. They might have SH, had, that's what it was. They might have had the SH1. I'm sure they probably started with one, didn't they? I don't know. Well, there was the SH101, right? I mean, that was the yeah. that was the uh, the first one that they came out with. So, I mean, I've never seen the synthesizer, and I know they didn't make a lot of them. Um, mm -hmm. So... What impressed me about it, obviously, the sound blew me away. Yeah. I, when he when he uh, brought up uh, the second oscillator, and then he, um, where is it? I'm looking at the picture here. Uh, he brought in the second oscillator, and then I noticed the switches up here. He started messing with the waves. Yeah. But then, in the mixer session section, I was like, "Oh my God! Listen to that." I know. Um, and I was blown away. I was like, this thing is incredible. And the price is ridiculous. Dude, 599 bucks. This <laughs> and like those things are tanks, man. They're they are real serious pieces of equipment. Yeah. You know, build quality wise. You if can't it's anything, it. if it's anything like your monopoly, then it's so, it's a solid piece of gear. Bro, I think it's the exact same. I think the genius behind them using that platform for all these synthesizers is genius, you know? It is. And I see, that's what I didn't understand why they didn't, you know, Artoria didn't make the poly brew to flip top. I know that was, that was actually a bit devastating to be honest, because yeah, nobody, nobody got that. They were like, why did they make this a flip top? You know, cause maybe dude, maybe they're, maybe they're saving the flip top for the 12, you know, maybe, I don't know. I, cause I got to tell you, I like the way that looks. Number one, uh, the 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 Matrix Brute, like yeah. the MS Five, yeah. like the Monopoly. I just like the way you can. Me too. You know, even like the um, I mean, look what I did to the to the cat and the and the two wasps. Mm -hmm. I like stuff that's up like that. Facing you know what you. I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, li I like when stuff's facing you too, like that as well. Yeah, you know, like you have the um, you have your synths in front of you like that, and I'm, you see them in the back there. That's how yeah. mine are. You know, I like them facing me, you know, mm -hmm. um, although 
it's funny because with the osmos you have to play it down it's yeah. weird <laughs> yeah it's, um why because it just the, the, the because of the way you play it yeah, yeah um being able to wiggle the keys and stuff like that um being up top being up and you know what's funny i've never seen anybody angle it um all the demos i've seen or everybody plays it flat um but yeah, man, I, I think the MS5 is very cool. Um, I'm excited about it. I have no place to put it. Me neither. You get it? <laughs> you get it? I I got some I got some uh I got some gas pains. Oh, me too, dude. I, I got some gas pains for that too. I think this this might sound crazy, but I was actually, you know, as per usual, I was gassing for the OB UBXA desktop. Yes. And I just like this better. And it's going to be cheaper. Even though the UBXA desktop, I feel like my Hydrosynth got that area covered. And I just like the idea of this, the way that sounded, man. It just I sounded thought I, very it so interesting. It did. It really did. Uh, and if anybody has checked out the demo on it, like you, sh and, and you, if you haven't, definitely check it out. Cause it's, it just sounds really good. It's, yeah, man. it's different. It's a different sound. Like, a lot of people say, Jay, why do you have so many synthesizers? Don't they all sound the same? My my wife says that. Yeah. You know, um, and I'm like, nope, they all have different characters. They all, they're all like, they're like people, you know, they're all different, you know, shapes, sizes, sounds, um, languages, you know, the synth languages, you know, might be relatively the same, but it's, and it's, when, it's. When you start putting them together, that's when you hear them start singing. You're like, mm -hmm. these aren't the same, man. No, but of course uh, they're the similar, but they're not the same. Like, dude, yeah, that, that wasp, the wasp from the cat, come on, not the same. No, at not all. at all. Not at all. I mean, the things that the, the cat can do, I, I told you this before, that synthesizer blows me away. <laughs> I'm getting the cat eventually because that's just too good a deal to pass up for something that sounds so it's, cool. It's totally, it's, it's totally worth it. Um, and it's it's uh, duophonic, which is, you know? I mean, that's sweet. I just did the upgrade on it, the uh, firmware upgrade on it, and it actually um, it fixed some of the problems with the duophonic uh, phasing that was going on with it, uh, which I was pretty happy about because it did it when you hold down a key, you can only play like two or three notes at the same time. Uh -huh. um, but what was happening is like the the key I was holding down would cut out every once in a while. That's fixed. Um, the note doubling on the wasp, that's fixed on the on the latest software so Behringer's good with upgrading their stuff yeah I they are so. you know they they're are decent they're they, they do a good job you know everybody complained about the behringer um deep mind software that i use to go with the deep mind 12 that's another thing uh -huh. behringer did it man they did yeah. the integration with the software you know i wonder when behringer is going to go digital dude i know that they're <laughs> sniffing around it and yeah, it's interesting. And, and they like uh, to sniff around Arturia's backyard too. So oh, they the they they like analog stuff because I think um I think the growing need for people that wanted analog stuff was just outrageous. And yeah, that's how a huge void, man. And people yeah, they're they're feeding it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I agree with you. I'm curious to know what they come out with that's gonna be digital. I think it's gonna be a DX. I think their their initial one is going to be a DX. They teased this picture a while ago of the DX one, which is obviously Jack really. Cantor. Yeah, they teased the picture. I think it was on the birthday of the the DX one's birthday or something. They put a picture up on their Facebook page, and I was like, "Ooh, that's going to be their first digital." I don't know if it'll be the seven or the one or what, but 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 programmable like the Op six, right? I'd say it's going to be program. I mean, surely, dude, they <laughs> surely they're not gonna. But okay, this is someone in the comments of one of the videos was saying uh, earlier today that I feel like everyone's ready now for Behringer to make a little bit of a pivot. You know, like I love mm. the clones. I love the nostalgia. But if you've noticed a lot of people, when something comes out, they're like, oh, we should have that. Right, right. I'm, I'm happy they I'm happy they were true to the clone, but I wish it had that, you know? Like, yeah. I guess with the Pro 800, they added two voices. That's cool. So if they came out with a DX7 clone or something like that, you can't use that old. I guess you could, but I don't. I think well, you use the Korg style one because the Korg Op 6 is, is super intuitive, you know? Oh, yeah. And and the other thing is like 
<clears throat> excuse me, like the other thing is I would, I remember the DX7, dude. I hated that keyboard. Mm -hmm. Absolutely hated it. I knew people that had it. I know dudes that used it just for the presets because they could not dive into it at all. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Marshall Arnold, um, there's a video of him literally taking a sledgehammer to a DX7. Because <laughs> it's so frustrating? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, you got the you Op6? Have... You got the Op6? Yeah, I have the Op6. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I love it. Dude, that's like very intuitive, man. Yeah, because you can twiddle stuff. Yeah. I even have the Korg FM. The little, the little Volca, mm -hmm. um, and you could twiddle and tweak that thing, you know, to your heart's content. And it like, yeah. you know, the DX7, it was a nightmare. I don't so, know if you watched that, um, uh, the the video I, I I showed you. Um, I think you posted it, did you? The video of the guy with the synth, yes, museum, yes, yeah, He's um, McNugget, yeah. <laughs> he was a <laughs> he was a DX7 programmer. Dude. Like he he loved that thing. He was a genius. He was, and he knew a lot of a lot of a lot of heavy hitters. Man, he hung out with Bob Moog and what was his it, name? It seemed like it seemed like all the heavy hitters had him on the hotline. If there was an issue, they're like, "Get McNugget over here ASAP." Yeah, yeah. Um, what's his last? His last name was Wilson. Um, I forget, man. And like I said, he was a super nice guy, but he was definitely uh, too much going eccentric. On, man. He had so much going on. That there was no time to his mind must have been so active with problem solving i would have loved i would have loved to just sit down with him and just tell us have him tell us the stories and the people that he worked with and that he met i mean because he started storytelling at the end of that video yeah and it just ended i was like man i wanted it to go on longer after that you know yeah me too i was he's like a very wow. endearing character man as you start to listen to him you're like wow yeah and the thing was, is when we went there, um, he didn't talk about any of that stuff with us. That's interesting. Um, we fed him. Yeah. Uh, it, it was sitting in McDonald's while he was eating his Happy Meal, and you know, <laughs> we talked we talked a little bit about sports, and like it was weird, you know. Um, and then when we got to his house and we checked out all the synthesizers, but you saw all the it was sad man the stuff that just piled on top of all these beautiful synths and he was like look over here we got the white arp edition yeah just like banged up against the wall yeah like, man over here we got the you know fill in the you can turn it on yourself broken water dripping on it oh yeah remember the opening part yeah, of the yeah, video yeah, yeah, yeah. he's talking about the leak in his sailing yeah yeah it's the bucket don't move the bucket it's yeah don't move right the there. bucket it's right there man like i'm like going what but that's cool <laughs> is that so interesting man but like it's just so interesting that that guy had such knowledge yeah that yeah, he, he took it to the grave yeah he was a savant man for sure i was bummed when he died i when i found out that he died somebody had said hey man have you seen this video uh that the dude from the synth museum passed away and i was like oh so that's when i went on and watched the whole video um sad man you know what yeah. i mean like but anyway, we digress. If you digress. guys haven't seen it, if you guys haven't seen it, what would you type in? You type in uh, Synth Museum, New Hampshire. Yeah. But go back and scroll through the community tab. I think I posted it like a couple weeks ago if you want to see yeah, it. Yeah, you did. It's yeah. awesome. It's, a, it's, it's like 25 minutes or something or a half hour. Super interesting. Yeah, I think it's like a half hour. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. But, but yeah. I would, back to Behringer. Ahead. I think that their first digital synth, if they did a DX edition with the Korg Op6 interface, it would be a hit. I think so. You know, I think it'd be a um, hit. What would be really cool, if they did a DX7 style like that with a couple of analog filters. Oh, See, yeah, that would dude, be cool. If they hybrid like the Mini Freak. Exactly. That would be... Man, they're probably moving that way. They're moving. Who knows? They're creeping. Would it be you don't know what they're doing. They drop stuff when you don't even expect it. It's crazy. Wouldn't it be funny if they actually came out with a mini freak clone? That would really piss people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all <laughs> they'd have to do is call it the mega freak and then boom, right? it's gone. Right? And make it full size keys, yeah. telephonic aftertouch, you know. I don't know. We, I was talking to um, someone today and we were just saying how the beautiful thing about Behringer for me is they always keep you excited. Right. You know? They're always doing something to keep you excited, whether it's 
some people hate it, whether it's some drama or whether it's a new synth tease or whether it's a surprise release or something on those lines. There's always something in the news to keep you excited. Now, on the other hand, Moog, hmm. what, what's Moog doing? Dude, seriously. I, I, mean, I need someone to explain to me what Moog is doing. All right, so you know how people hate on Behringer? Yes. I'm kind of getting that way about Moog. I think a lot of people are getting that way, man, to be and honest the, with you. The only reason is is because when I first started buying up synths again after I had sold a lot of stuff and, you know, I said, hey, man, I'm getting back into synthesizers. I miss it. It's part of who I am. Um, you know, obviously, I said I bought a, a, a DFAM, a Mother 32. I bought a, a, a Sub Fatty. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it still bothered me that I couldn't afford to buy something I always wanted. And that was a mini Moog mm -hmm. because it was just stupidly priced. Yeah. So, I mean, I've always kind of after that point, and then when my sub fatty kept having issues and my mother 32 had some weird issues going on with it, that's when I sold them. And I was like, done, I'm, I'm done with this company. Mm -hmm. Um, again, the, the tech support, the guys, the girls that worked there were great. Um, super nice on the phone, but you know, to me, they just kind of like, well, sitting on their laurels and, and living off the name. It, it was like, oh, you have a Moog? Wow, man. You know? Yeah. Um, the coolest thing they did was the sound studio with the subharmonicon. It's probably the coolest thing that they've, yeah, I thought they put out in a long time. You know, then you have like Lisa Belladonna, that her entire studio is like subharmonic, uh, the subharmonicons, <laughs> and then all just 32s and. I mean, it's sick. It looks like a sick modular system she has. You know what I mean? It's nuts. It is. She's yeah. she's very Dude, talented. That one video she does where she plays, I can't remember what it's called, but you're you're talking about the exact one. The whole wall is like yeah. tape reels, and then she's got like a, a what? Like a, a, a seven stack of DFAM, Mother 32, stuff like yeah. Monocons. Then she's got the grandmother and the matriarch. But she has them all in the in the uh the the black. All and all you, are black is yeah, all, you, all you see is like red lights and stuff. It, lo it looked awesome. amazing. That's yeah. a spaceship for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and plus where she lives, dude, is like it's so beautiful there. You know what I mean? Um, her studio overlooks like a lake and mountains, and where like does she it's live? just uh she lives in the Appalachians. Oh yeah, damn man. How <laughs> that's that's that she was she grew up there. Oh, fair. Enough. Um, so it's just beautiful, you know what I mean? Um I, she was in town uh, in Boston uh, a while back, and I wanted to, I I messaged her and I said, "Hey, she was putting on a, a, a clinic in Boston mm -hmm. uh, for Moog," and I I messaged her. I said, "Hey, I, you know, is, is it just for alumni or is?" It, and she said, "You know, if you can come down," she said, "I'll I'll try to get you backstage." And I'm like, "Cool," you know what I mean? Because I've messaged her back and forth over the years. Um, you know, super talented human being. You know what I mean? She's super uh, talented. She is. Um, but you know, it's so weird, man. Like, I just think Moog I I just think they dropped the ball. They and got they, stuck. And, I think they got stuck, man. Or sabotaged, yeah. stuck and sat slash sabotaged, or something happened. There was some well, type of uh <clears throat> I don't know, something happened with Moog that obviously led to their demise when it comes to being sold to in music. But yeah, well, the weird thing is, like, remember they came out with um, what was the little synth that you had to build? Oh, the Wurz Cat or something, or the Mavis, or no, not no, the Mavis. The Mavis is the new one. The Mavis is the new one. Start work, work stat, work stat, work stat. Yeah. Um, and they came out with that, and then they came out with the Mother Thirty Two, and they came out with these little pro these products that like people could afford. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was looking at this, going, "Oh, cool! You know, the Moog is actually reaching out to the." the little guy now, which is nice. Um, and then, you know, they came out with the, with the, um, the grandmother. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, all right, this is not a bad price synthesizer. Mm -hmm. They, well, they came out with, I'm sorry, they came out with the sub fatty and that's what made me buy one because it was eight ninety nine. That's affordable. You know, that seemed like, do you know what? It's almost like they went that way and they went. <laughs> yeah. Well, then they came out with the sub 37. Mm -hmm. Um, and the sub fatty, 
had some issues. Uh, supposedly, it was the last uh, uh, Moog piece that Bob Moog actually uh, designed before he died. Um, okay, so I bought cool. it. You still I liked it. it. No, I sold it. Um, I liked it. It was fun, but um, I had some problems with the oscillators. Uh, and then I had a, a problem with the filter. I mean, um, I, I've heard nothing. This is like crazy, but I've heard more horror stories with people who've bought Moogs, Moog Wands, Sub Fatties. And what's the customer service like? Is it good? Oh, it's great. So like you got a problem, you send it back, they fix it, you send it back. But that's annoying though, to be always dealing with that. Yeah, I mean, I bought like I bought when I bought the sub the sub fatty. I bought the four year uh, warranty, um, which was like one hundred and twenty five bucks, which is pretty decent for, you know, covers the thing bump and a bumper other than water or liquid damage. You know what I mean? Um, so that was pretty decent for a four year warranty on anything. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll buy that. Um, the two guys that helped me out when when uh, I the oscillators the tuning was messed up on them. Mm -hmm. um, and at one point, the oscillator didn't work at all. The uh, not the oscillator. I'm sorry. The um, the foot. Uh, you know the uh, the the, the sixteen. Pedal? The no, the sixteen. Oh, the God, eight. Yeah, yeah. The pipes. Right. Or whatever. Yeah, that wasn't. It stopped working. And I was in the middle of a project using it. And I'm like, um, what's happening? You know, I, as I turned it off and I rebooted it, I did everything the tr troubleshooting thing told me to do. So then I called up and they're like, "Yeah, man, just send it back to us." I'm like, "Okay." So I sent it back. They fixed it. Um, then the, uh, filter started going, um, and you know, that was like this giant knob on the thing. That's what you use. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. So I sent it back, they fixed it and that was it. I put it on reverb.com and I sold it for five ninety nine. Um, so I got my money's worth out of it. I had it for like three years. Uh, but I mean, it's still, it was just a nightmare when something dies in your studio, even if you're surrounded by a bunch of stuff like we have, when something dies, you sit there and you're like, it's like when you get a dent in your brand new car, yeah, you're like, and it's like a malfunction in your spaceship now. Cause, exactly. Cause you know what it's like when you add a piece of gear, if you remove a piece of gear, man, it can screw everything up. Yeah. You can literally you know? be like, I don't know what I don't. I can't make anything anymore. Nothing sounds good anymore. What am I doing? This is cr for your style, and, my style, you know? And I relied on that as for my base. Yeah. That was my base synth, you know? Um, because that's basically what it was. It was really like a base synth. And it's funny because I thought about it. I said, I should have bought a base station. Um, <laughs> an Ovation base station, because those things are sick. I heard and, they're nuts too, yeah. And they last forever. I have a friend of mine that had one, an original base station. It still functions to this day. That's crazy. And that was what? Almost 20 years ago? Who, was, you know? who designed that? Do you know? Novation. Was it, was it Chris uh, Huggett, that guy? Oh, I, I think so, did yeah. The Mantis? I, uh, yeah, the guy who did the Mantis was the original base station, yeah. That's cool, man. That's very cool. So what's that tell you? You know what I mean? I mean, you know, again, it's a British company, right? And you sit there going, okay, well, how come Moog can't do that? Don't give me I this. I think the hype train's over. Let's be honest. I think they got kind of the, the veil has now lifted. Now, well, now what? Now what is it? Bought out. People are just even the old school people who are like Moog fanboys forever are kind of like, uh, if you release a cheap product, this is gonna blah blah. So like they're stuck. Whether they're gonna release a cheap product and anger all the old school who want like pristine, which is fair enough because there's a market right. for it, or are they gonna release a super expensive product and then they get no more cut into the customer base. They got to oh, do what's, something. What's this? What is the new one again? Um, the, the new one was rumored to be the mirror and they just came out the other day and there was another update that said it's going to be called the Moog Muse. The Muse. That's right. Right. Their new now the pictures polyphonic. And the pictures that you showed. Yep. Um, of that, even the one that was at the Super Bowl, it looked like it said Muse on it. Yeah. When so you maybe, zoom in, it's some, yeah, I think it's Muse or they could be doing a head fake again. Who knows? But then if you look at Synth Anatomy, I'll just pop it over here, but um, I'll scroll down. And you'll be able to see it in the post. Anyway, they got the little section where it says Muse, eight voice polyphonic analog. It's got the sliders with oscillator one, ring mod, oscillator two, uh, mod oscillator noise, and then overload. And when you zoom in on the Super Bowl one, it's, just, it, it's the exact same setup. So I guess they're going with the Muse. I think Muse is a cooler name. But 
Yeah. This is this is what I was saying. What are they do? What is their marketing department doing? This whole rollout is the wackest. Like, yeah, they, they did a okay, like they did a Super Bowl thing where they didn't even make it known it was in the Super Bowl. Super Bowl's over, and then and then it leaks. And then Andrew Wang posts a picture of him with it, and then radio silence, and then it pops up in a video uh, that Mo put out on their website with no sound. It's just kind of like a weak release. It's just not. It, it's just not. It, it's just kind of not what gets you excited, to be honest. It is it? Is it Andrew? You. Is it Andrew Wang or Andrew Hung? I don't even know, man. What is it? No, it's Andrew Hung. Andrew Hung. Wang. Yeah. Wang. Wang. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. Andrew Wang. Someone in the chat, just give us the pronunciation. Yeah, of that yeah. Name. Let's. What is that name? What is Andrew's name? Andrew Wang. Andrew Wang. Andrew, Andrew Hong. Hong or Andrew Hong. Right. Spell it out how it's said, not how it's and the, And the thing is, too, is like, I've, I've watched his videos. He 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 kind of reminds me of a, a, a Jade Wee uh, in a way. Um, but, you know, I, what do you, we won't he, get on that topic. But anyway, <laughs> he found his niche, man. And I think he found his niche of. Uh, this is the thing with this kind of video style that I don't like, and I'm sure you don't like. I don't like mega chops. I don't like when stuff looks like people are having seizures because they're cutting out the silence. I'm just because I don't find it genuine. I don't like it. And I find it hard to watch, to be honest. Like, even when I watch some synth demos, unless they're changing a scene. Yeah. So I don't mind if you're showing the demo and then you change the scene to a transition. Yeah. To a transition. But when they're like, yeah so every I'm, second I'm, I'm like I'm, on, I'm i'm all set with that i'm guilty of that i've done that in the past um and it was only because i was just editing things because i i went off script on some things and because i like to write stuff down if i'm doing a demo um you're supposed to do that it's like, that's late, not like a wrong thing yeah but lately dude i've been shooting from the hip i'm just like you know what i'm I just gonna do from the hips way to go yeah it's fun it's you know? fun you make mistakes. You got to self-correct. It's like live jamming. You know, you kind of. Well, that's like what I was watching. When I watch Woody's Piano Shack, he's always screwing shit up, man. Yeah. He's, scre he's screwing up names like I do. It's like, is it Mini Log, Mini Lug? What is it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and he leaves it in there, you know? Um, I mean, so that's what I've been doing lately. I'm just like, hey, man, whatever. You know what? It is what it is. I'm a human being. I'm not a robot. All right, um, I need I need to clarify something. Okay, so Ron Kavanaugh is saying he's been doing a lot of chops in his tutorials. I think chops in, in tutorials are fine. It's the chops on the person's on face. On the person's face, okay, yes. So chop chop the video up how you want, because I understand that. That makes total sense. It's almost like a transition. If you're looking down at your keyboard and you're chop that's fine. But when you right. got it on someone's face and they're twitching and chopping and twitching, it's just like ah. Uh, yeah. Makes me but feel that's weird. And, and that's a thing that that's actual video style. And that happened probably like, you know, people started doing that like five or six years ago. Um, and, you know, I don't know if you saw the, the, one of the videos, well, you did, you saw the wasp videos that I did, mm -hmm. you know, I did a transition, mm -hmm. you know, I, I played the, I played for a little bit. I said, okay, I'm going to change it up. So instead of just changing the patch, yeah. you know, and showing you, I just did a transition and I went into another patch because mm -hmm. what I was doing was I was, holding my phone on a uh on one of my um uh what do you call it my tripods and i was doing individual sections of what i was doing with the synthesizer so that led me to just do individual shots and then i was able to put a transition in between them mm -hmm. you know um which is you know a, a seamless smooth transition the choppiness and man you, I, and you can and you can like uh it's more motivating because you don't have to spend so much time. If you get good at these weird type of transitions, you don't have to spend so much time perfecting your video, I guess. Y yeah. Um, you don't, there's, it saves you on editing yeah. time, you know? What's, um, what's that shirt you got on again? This is. If I can. Oh yeah. Sweet. Forgive me. Forgive father. me father. <laughs> oh, that's amazing, man. But I have synth. That's amazing, dude. I love that. I, I, um, like, I, I think I told you before, I, uh, somebody had sent me the meme and it was this, uh, this nun, um, in front of like this, 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 uh, 
this priest, but the priest had this big synthesizer behind him Mm -hmm. and she's standing there and she's like, forgive me, father, for I have sent. And I said, there's gotta be a t-shirt out there with that. And I just Googled it. And I found this company. I think it was Redbubble. That's awesome. uh, That makes this. So I was like, I bought one immediately. I'm like, that's mine, you know? And I love it because it's in like, you can see the nun. Oh yeah, dude. That's cool, man. That's a sweet shirt. Yeah, I liked it. I was like, my, I, I'll never forget when I got it. I I went upstairs. We, my, my wife and I were going out, and I went upstairs. Uh, to I said, I got this shirt. I let me just run it upstairs. And then I said, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to put it on. So I put it on. It was a summer day, and I come walking down, and she's like, Oh my god, <laughs> dude, dude, t-shirts are amazing. Come on, man. Oh, that's like so. Quick story. I yeah. bought a Synth Samurai t-shirt. Um. Yeah. And you the a one, one too. I did. <laughs> good quality, right? Oh, it's great quality. Dude, they're good nice quality t-shirts. t-shirts. Go pick yeah. up a t-shirt, man. Come on, pick up a t-shirt. T-shirt. Shop. Yeah, fourth fourth wall. I actually, um, I just made a store because I, I was having, um, uh, what's the name of the company? I forget, Etsy? but they will make. What was it? Uh, t uh, T stripe or something? Was it one of those or Etsy or something? No, it wasn't Etsy. Um, T-spring? but it was like Teespring. Yeah. Um. And their quality is good, but their shirts, like if you order an extra large, like there, it's kind of like a large. So mm-hmm. like their shirts really aren't that fitted well. So, yeah. um, so yeah, so I created a new one from fourth wall, but, um, but anyway, fourth the shirt that I, tight. they're cool. It's good, good stuff, man. And yeah. I like the fact that you can put stuff on the arms. I yeah. love being able to have little logos on the arms. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, I bought, I bought the shirt, um, and it came in the mail and it's, uh, it's, Sith Samurai shirt, but it's the it's an astronaut. He looks like he's he's grabbing for a planet. And on the bottom in this little box, it says, uh, I need more space for synths. <laughs> and uh I I would have worn it tonight, but it was dirty because I wore it the other day. But um, but I, I left it on the I had it on the dining room table chair, and my wife came out and she was like, Really? And I'm like, <laughs> Well, listen. You want to talk about your wife saying something? Check this out, man. I picked up these babies. What do you got? Oh, oh, that's cool. Picked up these kimonos, man. Yeah, that's cool. Big dragon kimono. Very cool. Yeah, so I picked up like eight or nine of these things, man. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. Those are cool. Where'd you get them? I got it off of, uh, I'll send you the link. I'll send you yeah. the link after, yeah. So I got, I got that and... Uh, but to pick up a ton of these shades too and start sending them out to people. Yeah, I found I found a a, a pair of shades. I was going to actually send you. Oh, I meant to tell you this. I have to send you this link. I um, Huang. It's pronounced Huang. Huang. Andrew Huang. Okay. Huang. Cool. Uh, so he's Japanese, or is he Korean? I thought he's that's Korean. Korean. That's Korean. Yeah. I think he's Korean. Yeah, that's Korean. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I. Getting back to him real quick, I'm, I'm going to show you this link in a second. I'm going to mm-hmm. send it to you. Um, but, you know, I was watching some of his stuff, and I, you know, I subscribed to his channel. Um, he actually turned me on to this thing by Furman, which I really like. Um, it's a, it, it's, it turns off your gear in sequence. Because okay. when I would, I turn on my gear, I had another Furman, but it wasn't, it wasn't in sequence. And I would turn off my gear and my speakers would pop. And I'm like, oh, that's not good for the speakers, man. You know what I mean? And I have I have Adam's audio speakers, and I'm like, I don't want to blow these things, you know? Um, so I was watching a video of him one day, and he was talking about this this rack unit, nine nine inch, uh, nineteen inch rack, one space. Um, and it's a it's a Furman. Let me see if I. What's the deal with turning them off in sequence? Yeah, it's called the uh, Furman M8S, um, and when you turn it off, uh, everything shuts down in sequence. And the last thing to shut down is my speakers and they don't pop anymore. Um, so it turns off all my, my, uh, my, my gear here I have in front of me, I have, um, a compressor and I have, uh, this thing called a silver bullet, which is a colorizer and I've got my interface and then I got a couple other things and it just turns them off. Um, firm and M8S. I got to put it up here. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of expensive. Um, 29 bucks. Yeah. But you know what, man, it's a, it's a studio saver. 
Um, I'm, cool. I'm, I'm probably going to pick up a new one, uh, another one to throw into the other rack that I had built. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I have a Furman in there now. Oh, it's actually a live wire. Sorry. Uh, which is cool. Uh, but you know, it's nice to have more outlets instead of just, you know, a bunch of. Definitely. Uh, I got a tower down there that I've been using. But I gotta, I gotta get another power bar, man. I feel like something's gonna explode in here at some point. Yeah, I have under under my desk. You got the tower. I have this thing. It's this big, and it was I won it when I worked for this company. They had a raffle. It's by Monster, um, and it's this big. It's freaking huge. You can't see my hands, but it's huge, and it's designed for AV and uh, audio gear. So I have all of my stuff, even including the Furman's plugged into that. Really? So I have double protection. Yeah, because, dude, I'm telling you, you don't want to burn out a brownout or a power outage uh, oh, to, no, to mess with dude, your the stuff. Power, the power's been out here a bunch of times now, and I'm like, oh, is this going to mess all my stuff up, man? If you have if you have a decent uh, uh, surge power protector, whatever. surge protector, yeah, you should be okay. Yeah. You know? I, I turn all the gear down and turn everything off and then shut everything off. You should, know, I'm, I'm telling you, you should look into the MSI, uh, the uh, uh, M8S. Yeah, I'll try um, the MPC and get that. <laughs> well, that MPC, man, I don't know. It's uh... <laughs> taunting, taunting me. You know why it's haunting me? Because every day I go to work, I got to go downstairs and I got to walk by it. And it's like, it's, it's right there. At me because it's like, you haven't given me enough time yet. And I'm like, I'm coming back for you later. Uh, you just wait. You but know, like I said in the beginning, gremlin. the funny. The funniest thing you said, man, is when you said, I can't even open the box, man. It's freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, I told you, it made me feel like I was retarded. <laughs> like, I, when I was when I was using it, I was like, because, you know, you watch all the videos of, the, of the, the boss just, like, whipping through it like crazy. like, And it looks so intuitive when they're at it. And I was like, am I retarded? What the heck's going on? Right. Like, yep. Like, and I'm not. But I guess I, I really felt like I was. And I was like, Kate, my missus was like, what's wrong? And I'm like, this thing here, just, I don't know what, what's going on with this. If something's wrong with it. It's just, and it wasn't like I couldn't get any sound out of it. Right. It was just, it made no sense what the whole workflow was like. This makes no sense. Anyways, man, screw the NPC. All right. I'll you're going to, later. you're going to give it a shot again. And, and, and we'll give it one more shot. I'm gonna I'm gonna applaud you when you finally get rid of See, it. See, I um, might this what I might do, dude. I might do this and this. I might do a a 24 hour live stream, no break, where I put the NPC down, and then I just try to figure it out. And anybody can come in the chat and give me some tips as I'm screwing up. And after 24 hours, if I don't have this thing figured out, it's gone. Yeah, well, you better keep your sunglasses on because <laughs> at, at that point, your eyes might be bulging out of your head. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to I'll bring in the porta potty. I'll have like the, yeah. it'd be like the mad samurai, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so listen, man, right before we go though, because we'll, we'll we'll clue it up here soon now, but I just wanted to uh I wanted you to tell me about that vampire story, man, because oh last time I was here I had a beard, now I don't. So I you inspired me to be a little more vampirish in a good way. <laughs> so well, I, li I like the story and I wanted people to hear about it because I thought it was such a cool thing that you were involved in, man, you know? Yeah, no, it, it really was. I So uh, in 2010, um, I, I had a friend of mine. I was trying to incorporate my heavy metal and hard rock roots into my, my synthesizer roots, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like sitting there going... I'm like, how am I, you know, how am I going to do this? Like, so I, I, I dabbled in some industrial stuff and I, I put an album out and <laughs> you know, you know, it's bad when your friends go, Hey dude, you should really stick to writing rock and roll, you know? <laughs> um, and it really made me, it, it bummed me out, you know? Uh, but I, I respected his opinion because I played in bands with him too. And mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, that's cool. So I started getting like into reading Anne Rice books. Uh, again, I used to, I read the vampire Chronicles years ago and somebody, I lent them to somebody and I never got them back. So my wife bought me the Chronicle set for Christmas one year. And um, this is in like 20, 2009, I think. Yeah. And so 
I was like, Hey, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go in the studio. I read, I read pretty much all of them. I said, I'm going to the studio. I'm going to write something. So I started writing this song and I started thinking about vampires from the the books I was reading. Mm -hmm. Um, so I came up with, uh, this song called awake in the night and I wrote the lyrics and I said, wow, this might, this might be something cool. So I turned my friend on who told me I should stop writing synth and, and rock and roll stuff together. Um, and I said, Hey, Keith, what do you think of this man? And he listened to it and he went, wow. He was like, this is really good. And I was like, really? So then I started like thinking up stuff in my head going, you know, it'd be really cool if I do a photo shoot with an album for an album cover with some really hot looking goth girls um, and, you know, me in the middle of them because sex sells mm -hmm. and, yes, you know, it does. And, and here's the interesting thing about well-dressed women. Now I'm talking goth stuff. I'm not talking skimpy clad, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of stuff. You know, I'm talking, talking about dark regalian. I'm, I'm talking dark. Victorian style, yeah. Yeah. right? You know, dresses the whole nine yards. Um, so I said, yeah, I'm going to do this photo shoot. So I, a couple of guys that I work with, they had girlfriends and wives that were into this stuff. And so I said, uh, I said, Hey, you think they'd, and they're super pretty. I said, Hey, you think that I would, they would want to do a photo shoot with me. And they were like, Oh yeah, dude, they're all about that stuff. I'm like, okay, cool. Sweet. So we arranged it. And I got this really good photographer and we, we went into this abandoned building that a friend of mine owned and, um, it was really creepy and shit. Like it was just creepy. I said, this is perfect. Right. Yeah. Um, so we did the photo shoot and I was blown away by it. So then this other guy, Matt St. Jean, who actually plays in, uh, in this, this kind of prog rock band, um, called Astronoid. If anybody wants to check them out, they're really good. Uh, Matt was the, is the drummer in the band and Matt, you know, and I would talk in and he said, well, dude, why don't you write a story? Why don't you write a song based on each of the girls in the picture? That's a cool idea. So I started doing that and I named each girl. Mm -hmm. They're not a stage name. The names? Now, well, yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's Gwendolyn. There's uh, oh, legend. There's Christina. There's, it, it, there's a whole bunch of them. So, yeah, yeah. so anyway, so, so I, I, you know, I write each individual song and, um, and then all of a sudden it just came to me. I said, Hey, you know, it'd be really cool. What if I wrote, a backstory and this guy is a is a vampire right so my wife is kind of like you know at this point my wife's looking at me like what the f is this guy doing right yeah, yeah. so but she likes when i play guitar and sing she actually my wife actually hates my synthesizer stuff but she <laughs> likes the uh the, the little more mainstream stuff yeah she she likes yeah. rock and roll she yeah, likes yeah. country she likes stuff like that she likes when i go out and perform and, and yeah. sing and that's she likes when I play the drums and stuff and, but she definitely does not like the synth stuff. So, uh, <laughs> um, my, my so wife's I, like, it never ends. I'm always waiting for right. something. I'm just like, yeah. Sorry. Well, I'll do something for her on the floor and my wife will yeah, be like, yeah. she's like, Oh God, is it going to stop? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, I, but anyway, so, so I, I, I write this whole story out about this vampire named Alistair Ian Dockwater from the 17th century. What a name. Um, and uh well, I also found out I did see I when I do things though, man, I'm like very meticulous about stuff. So I had to find out exactly what part of Scotland he came from, um, Sweet. what his real name is. So Doc Water actually is the Scottish name for Douglas. Um, and they changed it to really? Douglas. Yeah. Oh, they, Dark Water is awesome. They changed it to Douglas because Doc Water sounded evil. And back then they, you know, they were they were hunting witches and burning them at the oh. stake. And they were they were in Europe, they were vampire hunting. They were killing people because they thought they were vampires. Maybe um, they were. So yeah, so you know, we don't know. You know what I mean? So Seems so more I more likely I, every day. <laughs> well, <laughs> It work. I say I have time vampires. Uh, oh yeah, just, just suck the life out of you. <laughs> um, but anyway, I I so I wrote this story, and each story had a song, 
right? Because the girl was involved. So the story started like this. Basically, Alistair was on his wedding night and uh, the night before his wedding, I mean, his, his fiance said, I have a gift to give you. So he's going down in the castle, down into her chambers, and he thinks he's going to tie one on with this chick and he's going to do the, the nasty, right? Yeah. Well, instead, and he only saw her at night. So that was clue for him, but he didn't get it because mm -hmm. he was deeply in love. So he ends up getting, she ends up turning him into a vampire and he like loses his mind. Like, he's like, I can't believe you did this to me. I can't marry you. So he leaves, he runs out of the castle and he takes off and he's gone for months. And he ends up at this tavern uh, called the Crimson Inn. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. <laughs> His classic name, right? I love it, man. I think this is amazing. And so he ends up meeting this, this, this uh, gypsy woman and the gypsy woman basically uh, she tells him she knows what he is. She already knows that he's a vampire. He, he ends up staying at this tavern for days and months because he's got money and, and he's just like, he needed a room to stay in and he would only come out at night. He wouldn't feed though. Mm -hmm. He couldn't because he didn't want to do that. It's kind of, that's very Anne Rice's like, um, yeah, like he was like the vampire that was like shunning, he would drink pig's blood or something. And yeah. He hated, he hated the fact that he was a vampire Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he hated his fiance. He, 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 he wanted to kill her in so many ways, but anyway, so the gypsy woman tells him because she's a fear of her own life thinking he's going to turn on her, but she doesn't know what his brain is at. And she says, I know what you are. He's sitting at the table with her and he says, uh, he says, well, what am I? And she says, I know what you are and you know what you are. She says, but the only way that you can break this curse is if you fall deeply in love again, hmm. which is a lie. Yeah. So throughout time, like Blade, he yeah. meets these different girls. Finally in Europe, it gets so intense with this vampire hunting and the witch burning that he decides now, and he's also at this point he is feeding. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he decides, look at, I gotta, I'm going to go to sleep. I, they won't kill me. We'll see what happens. I'll wake up a few months later and we'll be good. So, and what ends up happening is the church that he finds a basement in and hides and falls asleep in this coffin, classic vampire. Yeah. Um, you know, a thousand years goes by and you know, he wakes up and it's the 21st century. That's cool. Um, so this is kind of where I stole some stuff from Ann Rice. He was always a musician. He played violin and stuff and, you know, as a, as a Lord in, in the castle in Scotland. So, he starts hearing this music on the radio and on CDs. He's walking by stores and he's like, and people think he's in Salem mass and people think vampires are cool. So he's like, so he's just fitting in. Yeah. He's like, this is awesome. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, he ends up starting a record label and, uh, he ends up putting out an album and he plays with this band called sub seven and the undead. Uh, and that's where the story kind of takes off. And I had a narrator named Jackie Coffin. That's her real name. C O F F I N. Mm -hmm. That is her real name. That's crazy. See, that's, that's almost like serendipitous. That's like one of those bizarre. coincidences, bizarre. That's almost like, was I meant to make this whole Exactly. You know, like, and when I told my wife that too, I was like, her name is, her name is Jackie Coffin. And she's like, really? And I was like, yeah. So I had. I had a seven piece band with a violinist uh, who played with the Boston symphony, who was amazing. Kala. Mm -hmm. I had um, 16 cast members and I had, uh, I had uh, two belly dances and I had um, a, uh, a ballerina. I needed somebody who could dance. Cause there's a part in the story where he's sitting in this burnt out church um, where he basically lived and, um, and it was burnt out. And of course, it's a church. So, you know, it's burnt and there's no crucifix and stuff around. So he was good. Mm -hmm. um, and he's watching this ballerina who was an orphan. Uh, and she's just dancing. And he's standing there watching her. And so there's a whole song that goes with her. What style but of music it, are you playing? This is this is this is all like uh, just rock and roll classic. There's yeah, a lot yeah. of classical music involved in it mm -hmm. um, and some blues. Uh, we did, um, ain't no grave by, uh, 
by Johnny Cash. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one of the songs that I, I, one of the cover songs that I put in it. Um, but yeah, so I mean, you know, the belly dancers, we call them the dark gift dancers because the only time they would show up is when I turned somebody into a vampire. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was cool on stage when all of a sudden these girls in veils and stuff would show up. And I mean, these girls had the, uh, Libby and Amelia were amazing. They actually had the, they were belly dancers. That's what they did. That's wild. Um, but they were gothic belly dancers. There's a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, so we, you know, we put on this show for, you know, it started in 2010, uh, came out with the first album, started promoting it, started doing shows. We'd live in a theater for probably, you know, three or four days. Cause I was tired of playing clubs, man. And yeah. like, you know, and that's just such an interesting project, man. Well, it was fun and it yeah. was interesting. And, and we had, we got, you know, we got a lot of notoriety. I mean, right now, you know, if you go on to Apple music or like Spotify and stuff, sub seven and the undead, we're getting plays from all over the world. That's awesome. Um, man. You know, I still get stuff saying people in Dublin and Germany, uh, down in Australia, people are still playing it, but Canada, I have, I, we played on a radio station called Bloodlit radio. Got those snow vampires uh, up there. Yeah, man. You know, it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, uh, it was on, um, in, uh, Ontario, uh, uh, was it Ontario? How do you say it? Ontario, yeah. Ontario, Canada, um, Bloodlit radio, um, he featured us a bunch of times. We were on, um, uh, we were in a magazine, a couple of magazines. Um, it was fun. You know, I did it for probably, I don't know, close to 10 years. Um, that's cool, man. That's very cool. Dude, you know what you should do? You should imagine you could get this story and now dark water goes back to sleep. He awakens in 20, you know, 30, 27, and it's completely futuristic now. And it's all done with synthesizer music and it's graphic novel style. So like you get the, <laughs> someone does the artwork for it and it's like the story continues, but graphic novel or kind of well, like, uh, what do you call well, it? Well, it's funny. You should, it's funny. You should say that. Cause I actually came out with a comic book. Um, uh, <laughs> so there's, there's a comic book. There's, um, there's only one issue cause it was just too much work. Um, there was, uh, there's, you could go on to sub seven and the undead on YouTube. You can see the videos. Um, there's an interview with Jackie Coffin and me going to check it out. Um, uh, yeah, it was fun, man. But the thing is vampires aren't supposed to age as rapidly as human beings. And, um, <laughs> I look a hell of a lot different than I did then. Man, I think um, you look good, brother. Listen, thanks. I, I appreciate that. You look so good on the last one. I was like, I got to get rid of this muskrat off my face, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I need to have a little bit of that vampire flavor too. Well, this, be doing this, these were big mutton chops here and they were dark. Um, and my, my, my little, uh, flavor saver here or whatever you yeah, want to yeah, call yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was, uh, <laughs> that was almost black. Um, so and I had you, more hair. Did you have the big fluffy, uh, the big fluffy undershirt? Like the um, it, what'd you wear when you... most of the time i i dressed in like um some people are like i want to see this show man i want to experience this i i i wore like sometimes like a like a, a velvet suit coat with a, a a red tie with a black shirt or a so it was a lot of um so victorian goth uh vampires are like you know they're romantic they call it the romantic period mm-hmm. so i kind of dressed up a lot like that um on stage i would wear uh, button down shirts, uh, very one, once in a while I did wear something that was kind of like had the ruffles and stuff from like the 17th century. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, there were different things. And then there were a lot of times I would on stage, I would dress up, you know, with goth boots on. And, uh, I have a pair of really cool boots, dude. They're they're Dude, you'd have to go looking exactly like you do now with the shades and the, the two blade swords. That's how you'd have to roll well, into the next my- show. My old, my old, uh, sunglasses that I used to wear, I used to actually started wearing these, um, as the old red, uh, blood Ooh, red ones. Yeah. Those are sweet. These are the ones that I wore on stage sometimes, um, which was really difficult because when the stage would go all green yeah, and I would see all red, everything was all Brown. So it was, <laughs> oh yeah. Weird. Um, but yeah, no, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. We came out with two, I came out with two albums. I was the whole ball of wax though. Like I, I, um, wrote, directed and starred in it. Um, I also wrote all the music. Uh, so I would hand a CD to the bandmates and say, here, learn this. Um, and 
the second album was called symphony in blood uh and that one um i actually had my bass player come in uh laid on a bass part i had kala come in and she would play violin um and i would have uh kayla who was one of the she was one of the vampires but she was also a singer in the band mm -hmm. uh she would come in and did vocals with me we got really good uh traction on a song called um she cries like the moon um it's very acoustic uh and it's about jackie because at the end of the show mm -hmm. i'm done because jackie's done telling the story so instead of just letting her go, I can't let her go because she's going to tell everybody that there's real vampire out there, right? Yeah. So I actually tell the girls to feed on her and turn her. Oh, um, so at the end of the and it's funny, I got to tell you this real quick. During the show, people would literally yell out, kill her. They serious? hated Jackie because she's, she, because she dressed up like this typical, like, you know, prim and proper college student. Uh, that was her, that was her character. And I compelled her to tell the story because in the beginning I would push her on stage. I had a microphone backstage and I'd be like, you will tell the story, Jackie, the way I told you to tell it. And I pushed her out on the stage and she'd kind of stumble <laughs> and she was compelled. And so she would go and sit in this big chair, this big Gothic chair. Mm -hmm. And she had, we had a book that made that looked like leather and she would open it up and she would then start to tell the story and then the music would kick in. And the best part was we used dry ice in the beginning Ooh. and the dry ice would float up to people's heads in the audience. Oh. So they were Jesus. all engulfed Dude, in show, smoke, man, you know? Show. Yeah. What check, like show. I said, you can check out the, the photos and stuff on sub seven and the undead uh, website. I believe we still have the website up. Um, but yeah, man. And I, you know, it just got real tiring and it sounds like a was, lot of work, man. And but it was a lot fun, of work, but a lot of work. It was fun. And we were a family. I mean, we were a family, you know, the girls, uh, my wife was like the, 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 the theater mom and, and like, you know, we were a family. Um, it was nice. And then, you know, working a full-time gig, uh, you know, trying to pay my bills, um, mm -hmm. and then working, doing the show, you know, it just started weighing on me. I became, you know, I was the, I was the, the, the manager, the agent. If I had a girl call out, I had to find an understudy. Um, it was crazy, you know? Um, and it just got to me after a while. And my wife was just like, she's like, Jay, you're so stressed out. Like, you know, I don't like seeing you like this, you know? And, uh, it just became work. And that's what you um, gotta. Well, I, you know, it's funny. I, I bought, I, I started I ended up buying the Vulcas. That was my first intro oh, wow. back into synthesizers. And, um, and I just, I, I went nuts. I went, Oh my God, I miss doing this. And that was it. You know, and I brought basically the band dissolved. We played one glass gig uh, at a goth night in Salem. We were the headlining act. Um, and it was, I have to tell you in all the times I've been on tour and I've, I've played in multiple bands and done things. It was the worst show I ever played in my life. Um, Why? first, first note, it was eight degrees out. I walk into this club. We're setting up. I usually take more than one guitar with me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also usually take my guitars out of the case and set them up and let the room temperature get to them. And, yeah. uh, didn't do that. Um, uh, didn't bring a spare amp with me. Uh, first chord song called uh, To Live Forever. Because we when we did the club gig, we would just do a set. But I also would bring the belly dancers with me. Mm -hmm. um, and so the first note, I went to hit that power chord to start singing. And my string went boing. Uh and the guitar that I use is a hollow body guitar. It's on my wall. When that's when a string breaks on that guitar, it's like it just completely goes out of tune. Oh, um, no. So I'm standing there now holding this guitar. I can't even play it. So I looked at my guitar player and said, you got to play all the parts, dude. Um, so we introduced the belly dances and I did the synth jam thing where the belly dances would come out and they would dance. It was pre-recorded. So I went backstage and tried to, my guitar player gave me the a string because I didn't have any strings. This is how you knew I was on my way out with this band, dude. <laughs> um, he gave me the wrong string. And when I was cranking it up to tune it, that went boing. Oh my God. And I was like, we're done. The and universe was pushing you onwards. It, it, it's true. And I was, I was, uh, I was just done. Um, 
Were you, did you, you know, feel we, like you were forcing it at that point? Yeah. 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 Just, we yeah. lost. Well, the other thing too, is I, I got a drummer, a drummer left. So I got another drummer. The band didn't like him. So I was forced to kick him out of the band. So I kicked him out of the band. We were going to do the gig all acoustic. Um, but then, you know, the other guitar that had, I had two guitar players, the other guitar player, Steve, he said, I can play the drums, man. So he shows up with a kick drum and a snare drum and that's it. And a couple of cymbals. And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> and, and then to come to find out, he already had like a, a couple of drinks. Oh. And my rule was you don't drink or do anything before you go on stage. I'm like, I don't care what you do afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. But when we play, you need to be sober, you know? Mm. Um, and that was one of my rules. Um, but Steve was a young guy and, you know, he had a couple of beers and he was lit and his bass drum kept creeping forward. And then he broke the snare drum head. And I was just like, Oh dude. And I was just like, I'm done. You know what I mean? Like it, it, and it really made me, we got paid like 200 bones to, to, to play. And, um, the, the promoter was just like, Hey man, good show. The place was packed, dude. Um, so, oh, so, this... so did you notice more than the place or did you think the place noticed just as much as you did you guys? I don't, I don't, I, you know, it's funny. I, it's funny that you say that. I think more people, I think we noticed it was bad and they mm -hmm. didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Because everybody was coming up to us afterwards saying, Hey, I really enjoyed your band. And so then I went out back and grabbed all the CDs and all of the t-shirts and I started just handing them out. And my bass player goes, what are you doing? He goes, well, we, like, we, we didn't put on a good enough show to charge for these is what you thought. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I, he goes, I thought we were going to sell these. I said, I said, Wayne, I'm just giving them out. I said, that was the worst performance I've ever experienced in my life. <laughs> and I just literally started, I go, I was going up to complete strangers. And like, when I tell you this place was packed, it was packed. And I was going, Hey, you want a t-shirt? What size are you? And they were like, yeah. And so I, I'm just handing out sub seven t-shirts to everybody. And I'm like, I started, I go, do you like CDs? I know a lot of people do digital stuff. Now people, some, a lot of the goth heads were like, yeah, man, I still listen to CDs. I'm like, here, have a CD. I just handed everything out, dude. Mm -hmm. The boxes were empty. That's and awesome though. That's we, cool, man. And that we was probably, the end. That was the end. Um, I came home. And uh, my wife found another box of t-shirts and they were all like mediums and small. So I just went into work and said, Hey, you guys want some t-shirts? What was the design on the t-shirt? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, it's sick. It's uh, my buddy, uh, James, uh, made it up. So it's basically a bat. And then the bat on one side of the, so they see the bat wings, but on one side is a skull yeah. with fangs. And then it says sub seven in the undead. And on the back, it says, uh, says awake in the night um a dark love story oh, so, dude you should remake that shirt kind of and put it on your fourth wall that'd be cool t-shirt i i, I actually have like... i have a couple of them um still that i still wear once in a while you know Sweet. when you're a band member you're not supposed to wear your own shirt but i'm like hey man yeah, you know that, dude. whatever who cares man? i'm like I, yeah. I i i enjoyed the band and every halloween i really i it's miss it break the rules baby yeah, you know, but it is what it is. Um, and I'm I'm perfectly content in my little studio doing my thing. Yeah. You know, it's like I said, man, it's a beautiful, beautiful. I I I kind of transitioned out of martial arts and fighting into synthesizers, and that's what kind of what do you want to say? Saved your saved my mind, and you know, allowed me Will to you, outlet uh, creativity into something else. Well, I wanted to ask you that. Um, I mean, I know you, you know, you you obviously studied a lot more than I did. Um, you know, I, I barely remember my, my cartridges, but anyway, uh, that's, <laughs> um, uh, but I mean, so did you compete at all? Yeah, I did. I did judo growing up. And then when I cool. went, so I went and lived in Korea for 10 years. That's awesome. When I was 20, right out of university. So 20, it was like 20, three or two or something like what an that. awesome experience yeah so i went over there for 10 years and when, then when i went over there i got into uh mma and muay thai kickboxing and stuff. really yeah i did that i did a bunch of amateur mma and then i went and i had some shoulder problems from grappling from jujitsu and everything yeah so then i moved over to muay thai and kickboxing and then i just did kickboxing and then i uh did pro i was pro kickboxer over in south korea I had a 
three, two, two pro fights. And then I dislocated my shoulder again. And then I had to give it up. Wow. So, and I had like, I don't know, probably like seven or eight amateur. And then I did two pro kickboxing ones over there. And then, so yes, ladies and gentlemen, he truly is a synth samurai. He's uh he's the real deal. Yeah. So uh, what the point was is all these injuries. And then when I came back to America, uh, when I was living down with my wife now down in Massachusetts, we were going to a boxing gym and everything and kickboxing down there. And then I tore my Achilles tendon. And, oh. then, and then that was the end of it. Then it was just like, all right, I got to make a decision. Cause that laid me up for like a year rehab and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, am I going to keep doing this? Try to compete. So how, you know? how old were you at that point? Man, that was in 20. I tore my Achilles tendon in 2018. I think it was. Okay. So I was still going. I was like still going to have some fights and stuff like that. And uh, just it just snapped, man. And so I had to give that up. And that's when I kind of found synthesizers. That's right cool. After, yeah, right after that, got into synthesizers. And like we were talking about before, I kind of look at it like martial arts. And my mind structures it in like putting reps in and then live jamming, sparring, and then like learning new techniques, you know? So it's like, I kind of apply my same mindset that I was doing in that to this. And weirdly enough, it transitions for me anyways, really well. Yeah. But it's just such an escape because you spend so much time training and like, you know, practicing in a band and, and put, you know, it's such a huge part of your life that when that gets removed, there's this giant crater. Yeah. And there's no better void to fill it with than something you can do individually. Because with synthesizers, you can do it individually, right? You're That's your, right. You're your own band. Yep. And it's just a really cool thing. And for me, I was never a musician. I only started this in 2018. So I was new to it. So I'm still totally fascinated and blown away and excited about oh, everything all the time. It's great, right? dude. That's why I was, I was so happy to meet somebody like you because I was like, you put the spark back into me. I got to tell you, because uh, we were talking about how Sonic State is kind of like losing its spark a little bit. Even they're though had, I was getting it back the other day, though, they seem to be getting it back there the other day. I was like, all right, man, the boys are coming around again now. Yeah, I have to say, and, and having Rich on there, I think, helped out a yeah. lot. You Gaz know, was back there yep. today. It was, it was cool. The boys were getting, a... getting the crew and the, and the dude from uh, Pittsburgh Modular. He's oh, Rich there. was back he's, again? He's, yeah, he's back there now. I think it's his third time. So That's I cool. thought the show was awesome today and the last one. Good, good. Yeah. But, I, you know, like, it, it's, it's nice because, like, I... I didn't say I didn't, I, I didn't lose the spark, but I mean, you know, a lot of times, like there's not a whole bunch of people that are into this stuff, dude, that, that I know personally, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, um, the, the cool thing is this guy, Melvin, that I mentioned, um, you know, he's, you know, he's a producer and stuff and Melvin's real ghetto. He's awesome. He's right from New York, like, like hardcore ghetto dude. Like everything's yo bro. Hey bro. Yo bro. Right. It's like, <laughs> but he's a <laughs> sweetheart of a guy and he's, he's really, really good. And so it's kind of cool being able to talk to him a little bit, you know, um, he's on a different level, um, with gear than I am. He likes synthesizers, but he's more into hip hop and drum machines and things like that. And that's cool. And we both can, you know, rap about it. He was asking me about the, uh, the Astro lab and what I thought about it. He's, he, he's like, bro, 2,400 bones. He's like, I can't do that, man. You know? And I well, said, no, nah, 2,400 Canadian. No, 2,400 all is, that's what he said. That oh, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I said, well, I think it's, I think there's, there's three different models they're offering, right? Is there? I don't know. I thought, I thought I there saw was. I today on Sweetwater, it was $15.99. Okay. On Arturia's website, $19.99. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I mean, $1,600, that's not bad. If you think like, about it, five $600 VST pack, five $600 MIDI controller with aftertouch. Well, you know, that reminds me. Um, it was interesting what Woody said also, he said, wouldn't it have been cool if you already own the V pack mm -hmm. that they gave you like, Hey, here's like a discount on like, cause remember when Korg did cool. it. Yeah, that would be cool. Korg was like, Hey man, you can get the, uh, the wave state software for 40 bucks. Uh, if you own the hardware, all you have to do is put in your serial number, mm -hmm. you know? So that would have been cool if they did that. Um, I think that, I think that would have been a little bit more fruitful for people to grasp onto, you know what I mean? It uh, definitely but anyway, would have made a lot of people bigger fans of the, the release. I think so. You know, I think so. Yeah. But you know, man, I got to just say like, uh, 
you know, it was cool. It was cool uh, meeting up with you and 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 being able to do this kind of thing because I dig it. And it's a pleasure, man. I really enjoy it. And you know, I think people enjoy listening. I enjoy talking. I'd do this even if there was nobody listening or paying attention because it's yeah, really well, fun to talk about it. And we, you know. we all talk. It's funny. My wife will be like, she'll be like, "Who are you talking to?" And I'm like, "Shh," you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> last last one, my wife crept in the room. She's like, "Shut it down now," because on certain days I got to get up super early in the morning and go to work. Yeah, yeah, right? but. I don't care. This yeah, my wife. My wife is up at four a.m. every morning. Yeah, so, so she's, she's probably like chill it out. Well, like I said, she's down the hall. I got the door closed, so she's yeah, uh, be like, she, "You forget I'm a vampire, baby." Oh, she knows. Because <laughs> <laughs> what what time is it? It's uh, ten twenty nine. So after this, I'm gonna go and just kind of like watch Rick and Morty or something. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm excited for you to get the mini brute. Actually, I'm. I want to hear your take on it. Actually. Well, I, it's, I, I have to tell you. So when I saw you do that demo, which was very good, by the way, I thought it was awesome. Thanks, man. Um, I appreciate that. Because what you did was you did what, and I, I messaged you on this. I said, what you did is what people don't do when they demo something. You took patches and you messed with them. Mm -hmm. Everybody that demos a synth, and I'm not knocking anybody, Everybody has to go, okay, well, let's, let's, let's initialize a patch and let's do a square wave. Let's do a, uh, mm -hmm. uh, let's do a, 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 saw, a sawtooth wave. Let's, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm like, okay, man, that's great. We know they have those waveforms in them. Mm -hmm. I want to hear what this thing can do. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's kind of what I was like thinking. I was like, let's just, it's a weird thing, man, because you can't be, you can't care about making mistakes. Right. And I think a lot of times when people are doing some of these demos, it's very, you know, like you just said, the order of operations, throw on the yep. square wave, throw on the triangle, throw on the sine wave, do the filter sweep, you know, like the standard. And by, and, and by the time, of the, you know, the, near the end of the video, they finally get to the, the effects. They finally, and I, I'm like, okay. And I, 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 a lot of times I jump. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I sometimes really enjoy, um, like when, uh, with Jack from Anderton music, um, what he I, does, I love Jack. I Jack's love great. Yeah. And, and sometimes he'll be like, Hey, I'm taking this thing out of the box. No talking, just presets. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, cool. I get to hear what the synthesizer can do. <laughs> yeah. I want the Astro lab presets one to 1300 video. Yeah. And I want to hear them all. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. And I want to hear just a little, like you just said, a little knob twisting, because that's what would make me be like, all right, that's cool. I'm into it. I'll, maybe I'll, I'll get and, that. And, and dude, that's what made me fire up the uh, the Mini Freak software again was watching your video. Sweet. Man, I went, that's cool. I was like, well, I didn't know this patch was in here. And I went, I, I looked it up and there it is. And I'm like, oh, and, but the bummer for me was I was trying to get it to work with the Osmo. Yeah, yeah, and and it wouldn't. And I'm it looking should. everywhere. So here's the deal: the VST doesn't have MPE compatibilities, which I thought was strange because Pigments does. Huh. Um, and playing Pigments with the Osmo was crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I still played around with it, and I and I enjoyed it. And that's when I said, you know what, I I'm gonna buy this. I said this thing is crazy. I'm like, again, I'm like Hydrosynth Mini Free. Hydrosynth mini freak. And I, and I was like, and then when I saw your video, I went, Oh, I'm, I'm doing the mini freak, man. Like I think it's, you're going to like it, man. It's like just the interface is super simple too, man. It's deep, but like, and it's weird. It's weird. It's you can get, dude, when you get it, throw on the Geiger patch, put on a set of cans and just tweak the Geiger patch. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> it's I think to be honest, I think it's the most amazing sounding patch i've ever heard the crunchy and the crinkle and then it's got the mod uh the mod waivers on the side i don't know what it right. is, sliders but they're not you know like yeah the mod wheel and the pitch wheel yeah, yeah. and but it's got sliders the macros. i don't know yeah it's got the macros there that when you do that yeah. with the gogger dude it's just crazy and, then and that's you like, can, it's crazy. i had headphones on listening to it too and i'm going oh man that sounds ridiculous you know yeah um you played another patch that blew my mind it was um it's it was a big, fat, like deep, uh, like the a big, one? yeah. 
And I and I sat there and I went, wow, that is fuck. That's low, man. That's low frequency. You know what I mean? Oh, is that uh, the one I had? The, I did the arpeggiator on. No, that was cool too. You did a low frequency one, and I went, oh, that's deep. I'm like, because I'm always looking. I'm, there's always something in my mixes that's always missing, and it's mm -hmm. deep bass. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm starting to more, explore more in that. Yeah, um, you want that rumble? Yeah, and. Uh, there's other synths in here that do that, but not like that one did. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I was just, that's when I said, I got to break this open again. So I downloaded the upgrade. Um, Cause I, I didn't have 2.0. I had, I had the original. Um, So I downloaded that. I got that going and I started playing around with it today even. And I got, I wish I could play the track that I was messing with today. Cause I was just using the cat, the two wasps and the, um, the mini freak uh, nice. V system. And it sounded great, you know, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I really am. That's why I can't wait till I can sell this stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a good trade up. I think trading out those two for a mini freak is a very good trade. And the other thing is like, man, I, I have so much analog stuff. Yeah. You know, um, I like the digital stuff, um, because what's nice about the digital stuff is like, before I do anything on the wasp and the cat, I have to tune them. Mm-hmm which is fine. I mean, I, and I have to let them warm up, which yeah. is cool. Um, it, you, that's what you do with analog. That's what you pay for, you know? Um, and once they're warmed up and they're tuned, they sound amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I have a ton of that stuff. I just, you know, I, I really want to, and I'm hoping what you said is going to happen with Behringer is they finally do come out with something digital uh, that'll blow the doors off of everybody. And who knows you know, them coming out with that software, you know, Behringer doesn't just drop stuff like yeah, that man, for, you know sneaky, what I mean? <laughs> man, it's a sneaky move, you know? It really is when you think about it. Like, all you know of a sudden, I think? I almost think that that synth that they dropped, that was just like testing their servers. They were yeah. Like, Throw that out there and see how much interest there is, you know? Well, it, it was like, it was like a it. teaser too. Like what, let's see how many people bite on this. Yeah. A free you know? analog VST. And everybody bid on it. So many. I don't even know how I got it because I think I just seen it that night. I haven't downloaded it yet. Yeah, I got up. They pulled it. You can't get it. Oh, really? They pulled it. It crashed the website. So many people went. It just crashed everything. Now it's not even up anymore. Wow. Right? Wow. So I, I got up. I saw it that night when I was going to bed and I was like, oh, shit, should I go do a video? I was like, no, screw that. I'll get up in the morning. And I got up in the morning before work, came in, downloaded it. And I was like. I was like, should I just do a video about it? And I was like, screw it. I'll just download it and play a couple patches. And then yeah. I downloaded, played a couple patches. And uh, and then right after, someone was like, you can't even get it anymore. And I was like, what? So Wow, was, that's I didn't even know that. Yeah, but like you said, I think they're doing, I think they're venturing in. I've seen a couple breadcrumbs that they've been laying around digi about the digital thing. That It would be See, huge. Everybody's waiting for some clones of the digital. And, and don't forget, they're coming with the PPG wave. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. So that might be their platform. It's, that's a, it's a hybrid synth. Yeah. Yeah. So a hybrid I, would be sweet. Well, that's the thing. Like, you know, I, I know we got to wrap it up soon, but that's the thing Um, with the, um, the, the little crumb that they threw at us with that. Um, Do you have, do you own any of the Valhalla plugins? I don't man. So like the Valhalla. Um, I hear them all the time and they always sound. Oh. It's one of those are one of my favorite plugins for any type of reverb or delay, dude. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Cherry audio stuff is sick too. Um, but I was wondering what that synth would sound like if you ran it through the shimmer uh Valhalla plugin. I bet freak? you no, the the little um the little plugin that Behringer dropped. Oh yeah. I bet you that would sound sweet. I bet um, you would sound awesome. Dude, the because, patch I liked was the seashore one. It was just yeah, the 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 uh, white noise stuff. Yeah, yeah. the waves. I love sounds like that. But see, that's what I'm saying. Like, that was your classic analog. Yeah, that's why when when I, when you were playing, it, I was like, oh yeah, this is this is like the old school stuff. You know, yeah, it had no I wasn't effects. expecting anything because I've read it and I was like, I think a lot of people just went Behringer dropped a VST, and when they opened it up, I really think they expected it to be like, you know, mind blowing, like groove synthesis third wave style. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just but like, it, but. But that's exactly how analog synths were. Like, you know, when you got a when you bought a um, a sequential uh, uh, profit five, mm -hmm. there were no there were no effects on that thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. It was raw. 
Yeah. You know, it was up to you to make it sound good. You know what I mean? So, um, so did that's you, why, go ahead. Did you hear the, uh, when Sweetwater Daniel Fisher did the two pro 800s? Yes. Panned one pan to the right, yes. one pan to the left. And then he just kind of slightly knew, dude, that was crazy. Uh, so Greg from Sweetwater, my Sweetwater guy, uh, when he sent me the other wasp, he said, you should do something like what Daniel Fisher did with the wasp and pan one to the right, one to the left. Well, right, left, well, whatever. Um, and and I said, oh, I said, that sounds cool. He said, no, did you try? Did you check out the Daniel Fisher video on the pro, uh, was it the pro 800, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, I said, no. And he so he sent me the link and I watched it and I was like, oh my God, this sounds incredible. Dude, like, even if you added a little bit of delay too, little yeah, little delay on there, and then as you're tweaking it, I bet you would sound out of control. Amazing. And then you got the cat coming in. Well, that was the other thing. The cat would sit in the middle. I think I'd have yeah, the cat sit like in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. but very low. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot, man. I'm definitely gonna try it. You know, that'd be a cool uh, video to do, actually. I'm gonna try that, the but I, I hand wasps with the cat. Even if you didn't even use the cat, just the wasps. Yeah, I could do that. That'd be cool. I haven't done a video today. I usually, I try to do uh, one or two videos when on my days off. So tomorrow I'm going to, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that in the Behringer Edge um, cool. going into the wasp filter. Oh yeah. Dude, the See wasp what that sounds is, like. I'll, I'll break that wasp out again soon, I think. You should. Yeah, I'm going to break I, it. My, my thing now is I got to get a mixer. I got to get a bigger mixer so I can have everything plugged in. Oh, so... Let me see if I can do this. Hold on. I'm going to switch cameras for a second. Yeah. Go for it. So hold on. If it'll let me. And I'm just going to show you something because uh, I know you were talking about a mixer. Am I on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Good. We got, we can see now. All right. So I don't know if you can see that little mixer back there. Yeah. What is that? So that is called a, I want to say monkey. <laughs> it looks like monkey, yeah. Uh, it's the M-A-M-X-2. It's a stereo and a mono mixing board. Um, and I also have a, the one next to it is a little Behringer mixer. Mm -hmm. I have several mixing boards. I have these little mixers all over the place. I also have the rack down here and the, that was the 1602 that I did mm -hmm. the demo on. And then I did the, um, this is a, another Behringer mixer. It's a line mixer. Um, but the little mixers that I have, and I'll just show you the rest of the studio while I'm at it. I don't know, a little shaky. Well, we got the op six. We got the wave state. Yeah. You got the MS one up at the top. Yeah. And then on here, we've got, uh, the mini Lug. Yeah. The mod wave. Sweet. And then, we got some similar synths, man. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, when I saw that you had that stuff, uh, I was like, oh, cool. Uh, then I got the TR-8, which I love. A lot of people hate on the TR-8, but I like it. TR-8S does samples. I have a lot of my drum samples in there. Mm -hmm. There's the impact. Down on the bottom, my headphones aren't going to reach, so I'm going to unplug for a sec. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So, oh God, I'm, I'm caught. Okay. So that's what I have. The, uh, the impact, uh, drum brute impact attached to, and then to the V3. Is that the slicer? Okay. I have a TV3 there. And then under that, I can't reach. Can I? Can I reach? Let's see. Then I have the, uh, this is the TV-03, and then this is the TB-3. And, and the Osmos. Sweet, and man. And then. Osmos is sweet. Sorry. There's my Elise's kit. There's my Cat wall music. of shame. I'll check that out on uh, Sweetwater, that mixer. Oh, yeah. Guitars. Man. Sweet guitars, brother. And then. We have uh, what's that? We have that the, the TV three, the TV oh, three mo, yeah, and then the RD six, and then another one of those little monkey mixers, yeah. 
And then I have a little uh, Korg uh, analog delay. Yep. And then the Deep Mind. And then the Matrix. And then the Matrix Brute. Oh, oh and the this guy here. Oh, the Donner. That ugly looking thing. The Donner. <laughs> the Donner. Oh, and then I have this guy here too. What's that one? That's the sequential. Rev 2? Dave Smith instrument, the Rev uh, 2. Sweet. But let me switch over again. Sorry. I'm, I don't want to get anybody seasick. Man, that's a sweet, sweet setup, man. And amazing, amazing setup. I'll plug my headset back in. Hang on. So, Cap, yeah. Cap and 10 RG Music saying I can get a Behringer 16 channel rack mixer for 129 at Sweetwater. Yeah. He used it to add channels to his 32 channel Yamaha. Okay, I'm going to check that out. That's a good idea. When I was talking to my Sweetwater rep, I asked him about that. He's like, no, you can't do that. I'm like, I can't Why? add a rack to go into the. Why can't you? I don't know. It's what he said. I don't know if he was just. Those maybe, little. He those might have misunderstood those, me. Those little monkey mixers or whatever they're called, a monkey or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, I got those on on uh, Amazon. They're like 38 bucks a piece. Though that's going and dude, those are uh, so. Here's the thing: if they weren't quiet, I would have sent it back. Yeah, they run on USB power. Um, they're quiet. Like when I tell you they're quiet, because I actually I crank. This is what I do with mixers: I crank them all the way up and just run to see if there's white noise coming out of them or yeah. any kind of static. There's nothing coming out of those. Um, so is that so the, yeah? Is that the MX one mixer? No, that's the um. That's the what was it? I said it was the M A M A M X two M A X two. All right, M A M X two M A M X two. I'll check um, those out. And you got that running into one of your other mixers into a stereo yeah. I got channel? it. I got it coming out of stereo, going into stereo into one of the stereo mixers. That's what I got to start doing in a minute. But I'm gonna check out that one buddy's got in that. And how many stereo channels does that got? That one has two, three. Six channels, but what I like about them too is that they have buttons on them for stereo or mono, so you can use TRS or you can oh, just sweet. use TS. Oh, sweet. Um, so that's what I like them. Uh, and like I said, there were a couple of people that are musicians were like raving about them, saying these are great space savers if you don't have a lot of space. Um, what you get? So I ended up you get an Amazon or Sweetwater, Amazon. Yeah. And I, I have two of the small Behringer mixes too, they're very quiet, those are cool. Um, but yeah, and, and I have those going into my main Behringer mixers. Um, I'll show you this too, real quick. Yeah. Let me turn this back on. Sorry. Yeah. Switch again. Got to get a headband GoPro. Right. I had one. I just gave it to a buddy of mine. <laughs> so this is my interface. Um, a focus right and then i have this is the silver bullet which is a color colorizer yeah um pretty expensive piece of gear got that hooked up going through the main system and then i have uh an audio scape um compressor limiter which is really nice it's stereo and then over here with all these wires attached to it um that's a behringer that's an input um unit for uh it's an io so that plugs into the back of the um the focus right what's cool about that is all of those uh lines that you see going in there yeah those are all stereo lines coming out from the big main synthesizers that i have like the matrix brute and stuff like that Ooh, okay and then there's the Furman uh uh m8s Nice. Uh, power converter and that actually it, it shuts things off in sequence what's like i was saying earlier what's that yellow um, thing there to the right that's the edge oh so the edge so what i have on here is a um it's a patch for the patch cables um you just mock down what patches are connected to what so um it's just a cover got yeah i got like i don't know i think i got a hundred of them for 40 bucks oh sweet so you made um, a patch book that's deadly yeah pretty cool um and you know they mocked everything nice too so it's just like it is i i do miss the purple the purple's cool <laughs> yeah i know um, the purple looks awesome yeah but i gotta tell you i so i wanted to tell you this i found um a website 
that makes overlays. Um, so it makes overlays for any synth. Uh, and I got it right here. What's the name of it? I want to pull it up right now. Let's see what do we got. Here we go. And it's in my favorites folder, which is a nightmare. I got. I like the folder. overlays. Yeah, they're cool. That's all I'm saying um, about the MPC. Got some cool overlays on this one site I was looking at. Well, you know what's really sad is the guy. Um, it sounds like Heinbeck, uh, the company. Um, but he's not making them anymore. He's the one that made them for, um, Oh, Hank Woon, Hank Woon or something. Yeah. Like that? Something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah he's, yeah. he's shutting down, dude. I, I oh, read man. his, yeah, I went on his website last night and he's, he says he's shutting it down. Um, which is really sad because, um, he had some cool stuff. He did the Juno 106 layouts really nice. Um, for the deep mind. He did the deep mind ones too. Yeah. That's cool. I yeah, saw those. It, yeah, the Juno for the Deep Mind. Yeah, it was I was bummed. Uh, you know, he said, "I, you know, I'm really sorry. Thanks for all the support." He goes, but, um, you know, and Uli actually, the, there's a, a quote from Uli on his page saying that he was really happy uh, to to see this guy doing stuff for for synthesizers, and it was actually really nice, you know. But he said he's shutting down because the the supply and demand isn't up there anymore, and. Uh, I just felt, yeah, it was sucked. You know, it really sucked. Um, dude, I can't find this. He had, uh, thing. if it's the same one I'm thinking of, they had really cool ones for the Neutron. That's really yeah. cool overlays for the Neutron. They had cool ones for the, I haven't seen any overlays for the core gear. Have you? The Mod Wave, the Op 6, and the Wave State? Um, no. And I think because, uh, I know, well, those are all metal uh, faces, right? Yeah, I think it probably would work. So. Uh, here we go. Overlay synth skins. Here we go. So I'm going to, I'll just send you this real quick. You can pop it up on the page if you want. Yeah, send it over and I'll throw it up on the link here. Phone keeps going on here. All right. See if it'll let me do it. No? Did you get it? No, man. Maybe can't send stuff when we're in action. Didn't this happen last time, remember? Did it? Yeah, I tried to send me something and it wouldn't come in until after. It was like very odd. All right. Here we go. Watch this. I'll get around this, damn it. Because the... Uh, I want, I'm definitely going to... I don't know. You don't want to put a skin on that wasp. I love the chicken heads you got on the wasp. Yeah, I have to say that's very cool. <laughs> yeah, David and they're Poole very says Heine Kroon makes the overlays. Heine Kroon. That's what it is. Yeah, H E I N A K R O O N. Here, I just sent that to you on a uh, text message. Right, let's check it out. What I like about the chicken heads is where I place them. I only place them on switchers. Yeah, I like that. And I got to tell you, they do feel really nice when you're switching stuff. All right, so let's check out these overlays. You won't be able to see them, but everyone else will be able to see them. Yeah, I got it up. I got it up here, too. Oh, you got it on yours? Oh, yeah, so we got... Yeah, sweet. Let's check out... What we... Man, they got a but dude, Mini Freak but dude, overlays? Dude, look at the Mini oh! Freak ones. The white one is sick, man. Oh, yeah. That's very cool. Cheap, too. 40 bucks. That's not bad, yeah. man. The white one is sick, dude. I figured you'd like the white one. I do like the white one because I like white a lot. Yeah, I do too, actually. And I, I, I'm, I'm looking at that going, I don't know if I get the mini freak. I actually might buy this. I'm checking out the Behringer Edge ones. Oh, the, the Edge white is cool too. Yeah. The white one, and then they got the other colorful ones. That's not bad. But I like the purple. The, I think the purple looks good. The mini freak uh, blue one looks cool too. That kind of looks like a... Um, Oh, What's yeah. that synth? The uh, OD? The OD Super 6. Yeah, Udo that's what that Super looks six. like. Yeah, that actually looks cool. That's cool, man. Yeah, I was going to send that to you last night, but it was late. I'm like, no, if he gets a text message, he might be pissed off that I... <laughs> oh, let's check the new... No, man, you can send me text any time of day. All right, cool. Well, whether I'll reply is a different story, but don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah the, the Neutron... 
The Neutron ones are sick too. Like the the white ones really cool. Oh yeah, kit them all out in white. Get the white, get the white mini freak, the white neutron, everything white. I mean, I I like I said, I I was never a big fan of white, but lately I I even like when that the the um Astrolab, I was like, all right, that looks pretty sick in white, man. That looks good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Is uh. There's the uh mi ma the micro korg. We got the micro korg there too. The and red the torn. red one in the micro korg looks sick. I used to have a micro korg. Oh, they got the T. Oh, they only got the TR six. Yeah. I should have never gotten rid of that. Which one? The micro korg. Yeah. What do you think with the new micro korg? Which one? Oh, the micro korg two. Yeah. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. I like the um, I like the big display on it, which is a lot nicer than that little red screen i'm hoping they'll add the big display to some of their newer synths to come out you know because i think that's yeah a very very cool feature because it's time for korg to update their displays let's be honest oh absolutely you know what i mean like it's all good and fine and dandy but listen when arturia is coming out with the nest thermostat you know you got you just got to get even even arturia's uh polybrute screen is amazing right right you know even though it's basic it's still very very like clean looking you know? oh it looks great one of the things that bugs me on the matrix brute is this little white screen that they never did a backlight on um yeah, and that's yeah. where that's where you actually um you're you're actually telling the matrix brute where to uh, uh route stuff and you can hardly see it so i have to have a light on when i'm using that yeah um can but you, can you know you get that replaced no they never updated even when they came out with the the noir they never updated it that's annoying but even I the little go on. The, the little micro freak looks good in white yeah the micro i think i even think they've released a white micro freak oh yeah they did they did a black one too didn't they the uh yeah they did the stellar style one it's called like stellar it had like stars or something yeah and i guess this guy yeah, if you text him um you do custom he'll yeah he'll do a custom very cool man i wonder if he could do cut three three for the wave state the op six and the mod wave all the same color i want to have him do the key step over oh yeah the key step yeah <laughs> get that key step switched up do you ever see Goku's I... key step with the fingerprints on it that he painted yeah 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 i um I was going to get a black one and they were all out. So Guitar Center only had the white one. So I got the white one. So Not I'm like, if he... white? what's that? Not down. Do red, man. Get a red overlay. Well, I was going to say I could do, I want a different overlay, but like, I like the white now, but um, at the time I wanted a black one because it matched everything. Mm -hmm. But now like I have so many different colors in my studio. Now I think it's awesome. Um, yeah. I like it too, man. Let's see here. What else could I do? I mean, I'd, I'd like to do an overlay for the three Korgs. That would be, that would be cool. You know? Three One of the things, I watched a guy do put an overlay on. And I have to tell you, it's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> well, one thing I wouldn't want is the overlay to be, like, super sticky when you tore it off and lay all this this stickiness well, to it. I was looking at one the other day, and the guy said the overlays don't leave any... Residue. Yeah, any residue at all. Well, that Heim Bucko guy, whatever his name is, his his were like that. They didn't leave any resume at all, uh, residue at all. Could have been him. Uh, but the guy I watched last night, um, his was just a sticky mess. It was very, very sticky. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not into that because I don't want to ruin it. No, me either. Right. I don't want putting something over, but I don't want to be ruining it. But the thing that was amazing was that he was having a hard time with, even though he took all the knobs off and everything, and. Um, was lining up the LEDs. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's rough. That was the hardest thing he said he had to do, but he did it, and it came out awesome. Especially with the Op6, those tiny little circle ones there. Yeah, oh. that's that's what he was talking about. Man, that sounds, uh, he like, was doing, that he sounds was, like NPC territory to me. He was doing a, 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 a Juno, and um, it, it did all the little tiny lights that are on the Juno, he was having a hard time lighting, uh, lining them up. Yeah. But yeah, so I figured I'd share this with you, bro. That's sweet, man. I'm going to check that out some more. And I got to check out a couple more things, man. Uh, I want to check out that bike company some more. Toner, you said it was, right? Yeah. Toner's cool. I'm going to be checking that out. And I want to check out your your band too, the uh, 
What's the name of it again? Sub Seven and the Undead. It's the number seven, too, yeah. by the way. Sub Seven and the Undead. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you the link. Yeah, I'm going to throw it in the chat here. Sub Seven and the Undead. Yeah. All right, that's cool. Oh, this is my Bandcamp one. Dude, get in the uh, get in the Discord. Throw your Bandcamp in there. I'll send you. The well, link I have, tomorrow. I do. I have a Bandcamp one for um. Oh, oh, dude. Here, here's the. <laughs> here you go. Here's the. You ready? This is gonna be cool. It's gonna blow your mind. This is the um, this is the logo. Send it over. Let's see. So off to the center. That's my niece, by the way. She has uh she had she looks like she has contact lenses in, but she doesn't. She was actually rolling her eyes in the back of her head. Oh, that's um, funny. Yeah, she's a nut. Um, but yeah, see, so if you click on the logo. Oh, now I'm gonna pull it up. Let's see. So click on the see the logo to the right, top right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I thought. So I got sub seventy undead the logo. So yeah, just click on the logo. Got it. Oh yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's what was on the shirt. Oh, that's cool, man. The skull and the bat. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, when James Cre he he drew that when he came up with it, and that was our font. I had to buy that font. Um, that's an awesome font too. Kind of looks like, you know, like wings. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's beautiful, man. That's a cool logo. It, isn't it cool? That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. When he drew that and he showed us, he says, what do you think of this for a shirt? And I was like, oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> that's sweet, man. Yeah. So that's the uh, web. That's the band camp for the sub seven. But I, I will throw the, um, the Echo Craft one up in the Discord. Yeah, throw that one up in the Discord. We'll get that going. We got uh, next week, what do we got going? We got the start of the Kumite. Yeah. Which is going to start Monday. And then the which... first song posted is going to be posted up on Friday if anyone's into it. And then Sunday, we'll do a little stream and play some of the songs. And then we'll Which is going to be cool. Yeah. And then we'll do that for eight weeks. And uh, man, we'll do this again, what, two weeks? Yeah, I'm in. You down for the bi weekly synth fight? Sure. Yeah. I'm enjoying it, man. I'm having a good time. And uh seems like we got lots of stuff to talk about too with all this awesome synth news coming out. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. All right. So uh let's wrap it up here now because I gotta get to get cleaned up and hit the sack, my my boy. I, I hear you, man. I'm all gonna right. uh so gonna go hold, watch Rick and Morty. You hold up there, and I'm just gonna <laughs> shut the stream down, and then we'll catch up for a sec after this. And thanks everybody for showing up, man. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, everybody. And we'll catch you cats later. All right. Peace. All right, peace out. Hold on. <laughs>